Welcome everyone, we are back. It is time, it is a big day. It's Tuesday, Super Millions, final table, special guest. We have special players at the final table. Of course, a huge prize pool, it's a Tuesday. Final table from Sunday that plays on Tuesday. My man, the current, that's right, the current reigning World Series of Poker main event champion coming to join us today, Espen Jorstad joins us here in the booth. If we can tag in Espen, here he is. Espen, how's it going, my man? What's up, Jeff? Yeah, it's going good. Um, all well. How you doing? Good, man. Same old. You know, you know how it is. Busy. Got a got a three and a half year old. Keeping every day is a the challenge. Yesterday was <laughs> Halloween. I know it's different parts of the world. Not a, a huge deal, but that is not the case in America. That is my son's Super Bowl, three years old. Probably the highlight Halloween of his life. His first kind of real one where he got to you know mix it up and get out there and, and do his own thing. So it was fun. Had a good time with that. But today it's poker. We got a special final table. Let's take a look at the future table today and if you are down espen for a a wager we can do a dinner bet or more whatever you want pick pick red or black we, we get to see who we get first and then we kind of gamble on the outcome of course the audience going to be involved for a ticket are, are you up for that for sure dinner for is sure. good right. dinner is good good dinner i, I know you're, you're single still and nice cause nice it, vegas dinner yes vegas or miami that'll be the deal if it you know i, I come with a plus one. I don't know. You're welcome to bring a date. I don't believe you have a, a gr girlfriend. I don't want to put you on the spot, but I'll, I'll, I'll try to get one. I'll try to get one. I can you'll, fi you'll find one by then. I love it. So, all right, let's take a look <laughs> at this final table. Let's go and jump into the action and see what we got today. I don't believe it's sort of a unique deal where there is actually no one has won a Super Millions title out of the whole group here. So we have some very experienced players. Some names jump out at me right away. I don't know if for yourself, you see anyone that that jumps out, but I see three, probably two or three players, kind of regulars or crushers. I would that, that I'm aware of at least. I'm sure a lot of great players. Anyone here stand out for you? Yeah, I've played with all of these guys quite a bit, except okay. for Hazes. I don't have much familiarity with, and Geometriali something. I uh, also don't have much familiarity with. Um, Geometry, yeah, Emily. Cool. T tough. Yeah. We'll call we'll call him Geo today. I also am not as familiar with that. You can see his his ranking not as as prevalent within the super millions, but does have almost a million in GG poker earnings. Uh, I see also Oliver Weiss, I believe, who is a it sounds very familiar. Austria flag always worries me. When I see the yeah. Austrian flag, I give them a lot of respect, just kind of automatically seem to know. They, they know how to play. We oh. do see the A6 suited right there, shove in, and, and Oliver has a, a very nice stack, 2.6 million. And we have a player sitting out, so maybe something more important, maybe internet issues, but he is deal de dealt out there, rocking the Mexico flag, Joyo, in the 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 lower left of your screen there. Um, never Oliver, seen Oliver this, is, um Oliver Weiss's skill mother uh, on stars, at least. He he went really deep in the man event, WSP man event, um, this year as well. I was playing with him on day six, probably, or something like that. He finished okay. top 100, I'm pretty sure, at least. He went really deep. Um, yeah, very old-time reg. He's been in the mix for a long time. Very good. Yeah, definitely a familiar familiar name there. And, of course, the Brazilians, you know, they're tough these days. It feels like we always get a Brazilian at the final table. Uh, Rodrigo Sirichuk, I'm not as familiar with this particular player, but... Brazilians always seem tough, and uh, Mr. Doberman, another tough player that I see familiar at these final tables. But the name that stands out to me is Ilias Parzinian. If I'm pronouncing it, of course, incorrectly, please help me. Can you maybe help me with that? Because he is an absolute savage. I'm not sure how to pronounce it either. I would say Elis Parzinian. Uh, I think That's... it's something like that. Uh, fellow Scandinavian. Uh, yeah. yeah, he's a he's a beast. He's uh... no. Amazing PLO player, but also Hold'em just really gets it. Just one of those guys that just crushes everything. Yeah, I think he would be my choice as the kind of standout favorite. But Oliver Weiss, again, very, very tough player. So let, let's get into it. Let's pick red or black. Why don't I want to welcome everyone in today to that has joined us where they are in the world. Let us know. We will have a giveaway for you, either $50 or $100. I like to give several players a chance where they get to get double the bonus if they were to win. But first, let's let's do our picks, and, and you can choose red or black to start the, the snake draft. All right, I'll do red. Red. All right, so we'll see a flop. We'll go from there. Audience at home, if you're watching, let us know who your favorites are. We see the button open really into one big blind here. We get the fold there. 
and we don't get to see a flop, but there is a looks like a new feature with the so win. It's going I like with any little... two there, huh? Going with any two. Yeah. Literally, I mean, if you're going with eight twos off, it's not much folding going on. It's a full, 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 uh, full range on the button, especially with the player sitting out, though. We see Joy actually picks up a hand here of sixes, which can't really see, can't see his exact stack. We do see the payouts. Everyone guaranteed 50 grand playing for three hundred and fifty three thousand dollars today on this beautiful Tuesday. And we are going to go ahead and let's see. I don't know. Probably won't see a flop here either because this is going to likely get kicked up from the chip leader really covering this player's stack goes for a small small three bet size and puts the ace 10 in a bit of a, a difficult difficult situation although not much to think about with that that exact hand so uh geo is off to a very very nice start 4.5 million has almost i guess double the second place a couple guys jumbled up there with around 2.6 2.8 million what is a what would be your strategy here if you're Geo with these these seats? As we see, Joya does join us now with about eight big blinds, three hundred twenty-two thousand. You see him opening super wide. Do you do you feel that's a good strategy to open one hundred percent on the button there with his stack, or is that something maybe you would be more paying attention to the skill level and the stacks of the guys in the in the blinds there? Yeah, it's a weird spot. You kind of have to freestyle a little bit because. It's not exactly as playing uh, heads up ranges, right? Because you have full big blind ante. So it's close to playing uh, heads up with big blind ante, only you haven't paid the small blind, of course. So you have to commit more chips to be a pip than if it was a heads up pot. So you have to you have to freestyle a bit. It's going to be a mix between the range of opening a regular button range and a heads up range uh, when a small blind is sitting out there. We see that Joyo, jo jo I don't know how to pronounce that, is back now, which is good because yeah. he only started the day with 10 bigs and now he's down to eight bigs. So yeah, good thing he wasn't sitting out much longer, at least. Yes. So back in the game, we are now nine-handed. We do see a check call there. King Jack suited, flats the small blind. Going to have a pretty strong range where the big blind has a shove stack. Also, knowing that Ilias is going to open fairly wide, this is definitely a concerning call card. You get called on a flop now, all the flushes do complete interesting what the queen five does with one diamond though here so let's see if he decides to slow down which he does and nice spot to have the nuts on the river you're out of position talk about bet size what do you, what do you think Rodrigo goes with here um kind of hard to say I, I think like the five of diamonds isn't super relevant as a blocker so i do like alice's check back it's not like he's blocking any flushes really with the five of diamonds here I don't think Rodrigo even flat king five of diamonds in a small blind here with the stack distribution. He goes for an over, but um, yeah, sure. I don't, I don't know. Like it's it's probably one of those where you're supposed to mix into two sizes. With ICM, you tend to use less over bets as the covered stack, I would say, and be a bit more careful about building huge pots. Of course, we're on the river here and. It's a flushy board, so maybe you're just supposed to use this size. Um, who knows? I actually played with uh, Rodrigo five days ago, six days ago. Um, maybe more, maybe like a week ago. We played uh, the 25K together at EBT London, actually. He was in a mix there with a bunch of other good Brazilian dudes. They're yeah, a so... pretty solid crew, that gang that travels around and play all, all the biggest stuff. Long, long tank here from Elias. Could be playing a lot of tables, could have timed out. I don't really see much what he would be thinking on doing there, but that is a nice pot from Rodrigo. He is up to 1.4 million. All pots are very critical, of course, as we say. This is kind of the, the, the most critical time of the tournament. ICMY is sort of in that start of the final table, you know, around seventh, eighth, ninth place, even a little before the final table. It's where it's very important. And there is some big money jumps coming up here as well as some shorter stacks, you know, Joyo trying to, trying to ladder. We see space 411, an experienced player, and Haas is all kind of on that critical stack depth. So let's see who is going to, who's going to take a risk, who's going to try to ladder. It's always fun to watch. And of course, some of the bigger names, bigger experienced players here have a lot of chips. So it should be an entertaining final table. Uh, did we see a red or black? I, I, I think we've seen some flops. I, I actually don't. I'm just going to give you first pick. I don't even know. Is it, you said black, right? I said red, but it doesn't matter. I haven't been paying attention. I don't even know what the rules are. Are we looking for two red cards on the flop or three? Or what are we doing here? 
How about I, I actually don't know which flop was. How about the next flop? Because I think we've missed a couple, and that was sure. black. But basically, just is who goes first. So we'll see. Once the flop's red or black, then we get to draft first. You go first pick gets one pick, second gets second and third. Then you go back to fourth. Oh, okay. Pick, but do we need so two just... red cards, or do we need the first yeah. is a red card or what? Uh, more more red than black. So if there's if there's sure. three or two, you you sure. you would win in first pick. But we're not going to see a flop there. Right. East three off. Interesting spot there for Hazes. Doesn't really want to flat. Has to decide sort of to go all in or fold. Does get out of the way. There is Joyo who is super, super short and does have a shove stack here. And look at this. No one even has an ace. No one has barely a Broadway. There's a king 10 there. But for, for that amount of chips, not going to call off players behind. And no flop coming. We will go ahead and we will move on to the next hand. See if we can see a flop. What? what tell me a little bit quickly before... Dive in the next hand here. How was EPT? You are you were playing in London. I saw I think a fourth place or so in a 25k profitable trip, fun trip, main event. Any good? Tell me about your your live run recently. Uh yeah, I had a pretty profitable session. I live in London as well, so it was very convenient. It was just like a 10-15 minute Uber drive the casino from here. Um yeah, I bricked the 10k mystery bounty to begin, and then I got fourth in the 25k hair roller, so it was nice. Uh, for like 100k usd or whatever um so that pretty much free rolled the rest of the series i would say i was planning to play pretty high but i actually decided to skip a couple of the big ones because the fields were not looking particularly good uh, i was planning to play another 25k and the 50k but i ended up skipping both of those um the 50k i think actually turned out to be better than the 25k that i final table but they were very similar it was just like a few recreationals uh, it was a bit sad because uh, it was a cashless event, so you couldn't buy in through cash, uh, which I think took a lot of the recreationals out of the mix. Uh, maybe a lot of the recreationals coming from big private games, or maybe they have some activity, some business activity where they're operating cash. I don't know, but uh, some recreationals were um, missing. So, yeah, the fields got a bit smaller because of that and a bit tougher, I think. Yeah, well, I know Luxon, right? They were taking Luxon, though. Was that set up yeah. where you could use that? Coin Rivet Luxon, very convenient yeah. for live things. I know we've uh, done the Coin Rivet podcast as well. So a little shout out to those those guys, making it a lot easier for players to play live and, and use money. I have, of course, an online option for GG and many of the sites. But uh, I think I did see the last flop. It was black. I will go first. I get the first pick. You get second and third. I am going to go with, I'm going to take Elias there just with the experience. Geo, I like that he's going for it, but you know, I, I don't have a lot of history on this guy and he's going to, he's got a tough seat. I think a little bit too, with some of the experienced players here. So I'm going to go ahead and take him. You got, you got the next two picks. Yeah. It seems like Oliver has kind of a going for it strategy as well. We saw him open uh, pocket trees uh, under gun seven earlier, which is very loose. Uh, with the stack distribution, he had Elias in the cutoff, which covered him. He had Geo in the low jack, with cover which covered him, and Ravid Garbi in a big blind, who had a similar stack. And Ravid also defended Ace four off in that hand, which is very loose as well, I think. So I would pro if I get the second and third pick, I will pick Oliver and Ravid. I mean, they have heaps of chips, and uh, they both seem to be going for it. And I've seen them both in the mix quite a bit, so probably. Ravid Garby, I don't know much about, but probably a good player, I would imagine. Okay, so you got you, yeah, nice. So you're taking also two more sort of known, experienced guys. I'll I'll have to take Geo and Doberman from there. Both I know. Well, Geo's got the chip lead, and Doberman has some experience as well. Tough player, so that'll be my picks. Now you get two, and then we'll have one, I believe, remaining that will just be we'll give to the audience as a bonus. So go ahead, and you get you get two more. All right, I'll go with the uh, Seji Star, uh, Rodrigo, and uh, Spisa. Spisa, okay. So that means that we have Joyo as a wild card. So I'm going to give the audience three players. We're going to give them the chip leader, Gio. We'll give them Joyo, the short stack for the miracle. And then how about let's let's go with uh, Elias there. I think that's a nice one for the audience to sweat. So that'd be for a bonus. They're going to get a $50 ticket guaranteed and if one of those three players win they will get a hundred dollars instead of the 50 for the the, the random if you guys hit the thumbs up and you type in the keyword which is later in the stream we will go ahead and make that eligible for the for the giveaway joyo's having some internet issues here man i don't know what's going on in mexico 
That has it ever happened to you? Have you ever had a big spot where you've had internet issues, either on a hand or for even a session? Um, not so much in um, modern times. I remember when I was playing uh, at my mom's house back when I was like uh, eighteen or whatever. Uh, the internet was not so good back then. I'm aging myself a lot by saying this, but it's like 15, 16 years ago. And I remember the internet was not great. And yeah, I, I remember I had like a few frustrating nights there trying to grind my way up in stakes. And I, I remember like if you were taking a shot, you were like playing higher than you normally would. Like you're trying to move up from NL uh, 500 to NL 1K or whatever. And you're playing a big NL 1K session and you keep getting disconnected, losing pots because of that um yeah that was pretty painful but in modern times i can't really remember having any big spots like this internet yeah, quality is a lot better these days luckily yeah in most parts yes. of the world at least yeah it is it's when I mean, you start having to travel out of the country and go to different places for internet when yeah you, you can run a few more issues but of course we are very fortunate nowadays there, there's a lot less of that pretty soon i think it'll be in the air yeah it's uh something in mile Go, go on airplanes, internet's getting a little better too. I don't know about Europe, but in the US kind of being able to play online a bit if you're, you know, if you're on an app or something, you're able to play, but we'll, uh, we'll, we'll monitor Wait, the what? internet for- In the plane? Yeah, like if you're playing on, you know, a private app or just like um, different- you know, Well, you're in, in the air? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. You're flying. Got, you're yeah. playing on an airplane. Yeah, oh yeah. Wi-Fi uh, on planes in Europe is absolute dog shit. That is not a thing in Europe. Yeah, it used to be where I'd be worried about it because I would time out sometimes or it could be sketchy, but I'd say it's like 95, 96% good. And yeah, it's a nice way to pass the time if you're in a club and playing one of the private apps like Club GG, see some hands, have some fun. And it uh, makes makes a trip from Miami to Vegas go very quickly. Five hours clicking some hands. I'll send you some screenshots. I got some fun ones, you know, in the clouds, like showing out the window, <laughs> all in videos. It's, it's, it's fun. Nice. It's for sure. Fun. Nice. Um, all right. Well, we got a interesting turn here. So Ravi has got a inferior hand, but now all of a sudden is chopping, although it's kind of, kind of an interesting one. And this is something where it actually could get kind of creative, right? Cause he is saying, Hey, like we might be chopping. I actually have maybe more nines. I guess it's, I don't know if with the button open though, it's going to have a pretty wide range too, but takes control of the hand and ooh, what a, what an interesting <laughs> river though. This is one of those ones that is now Rodrigo going to feel a lot better about. Although I'm curious what Robbie does here with 745 in the middle. This is, this is interesting because he has got a, got an interesting decision. I think he has a pretty clear check. I would say but what, what happened it was like open pre and then he see about one third and call or what? Yeah, he and then the turn he led. He Ravi let out on the turn. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> wow. I mean, like, you could jam to get him up a chop, I guess, but yeah, this is gonna get called always. Not really much to think about, I think. Yeah, I mean, I guess what yeah, Rodrigo loses to a nine. He loses to yeah, I don't know, his queen like some gut shot that queen tell like it's just kind of it's just a, it's a little bit as you said a check back that's what i would have expected but when he led the turn it made me think that maybe he's got some ill intentions here and Rodrigo though not a very comfortable spot like kind of thinking what do you what do you beat maybe it is someone trying to get you off a chop you do improve on the river you call the turn so now you actually your jack does play where you have two pairs um this is uh i actually don't know if he's gonna call you think I don't know. I, mean, I would be shocked if he folds here. There is no, there is no folding. And and thing is like, I don't know. Thing is like, if you have nine x or better here, your strategy should be to go all in. Like if you have queen ten or a nine, I think you'd only have one size and that's all in. So when he makes this size, it's kind of a weird size because a x is not good enough to size like this. And if you have nine x or better, you should just go all in. I think. This is kind of like a weird middling size where he's not really telling a consistent story, I think. I I'm not sure if you're trying to... Because like if you're trying to get him off a chop, which I guess is what he's trying to do. I don't know. I don't know. But I would be shocked if he folds here. That's... They, they, you know what they say, think long, think wrong, Espen. And he is thinking awfully long <laughs> on this. And I think... Uh. Um, Man, I'll tell you what, the the Brazil just had a new president elected. 
it's a reais versus dollars. It's a lot of reais. You're talking about about five x, one point five million dollars in Brazilian currency rei. And I mean, my man's in the tank. This is an interesting. It it actually shows you though a lot of other rivers, right? He's gonna fold probably for sure. And and yeah. you know this this particular one though, like you said, yeah, it's kind of call the turn. You know, spades miss, chop possibility to get blown off of. The sizing is curious, and I, I think he's gonna fold. I just think he's. I just. I don't know. Yeah, I agree. I would think normally it would be a call. Oh, did he did he fold and show? What just happened? No, 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 no. Okay, still thinking. I thought I just looked at his hand quickly. I was like, oh, I thought his cards flashed <laughs> up, but of course, whole cards are up. I don't know. I, I uh, guys, what do you think at home? I think he is. Oh, wow! Lays it down. Hand of the day. Wow. Early candidate right there. Ravid looking dangerous. Finding the fold. You know, could be. You know, you got to remember, right, Espen? These are smaller field sizes. A lot of these guys play this tournament so frequently they also battle you know two three tables left a lot maybe kind of an exploit right maybe thinking that the player could be a little more tight in spots and um that is a big fold for sure and Rodrigo's going to take a look at that on the replay and feel sick about it nice hand from Ravid and I don't think I don't think Ravid was trying to get ace jack to fold though right that that would be really ambitious but he uh he did and uh, he is up to 2.9 just over 3 million with the small blind posted. So well played there. And, you know, I get it. I get it. Tough spot. Very tough spot. I'm shocked. Not for you, though. For you, Espen. Not, not, Espen, are you? Well, I see the cards. So for me, it's, of course, like I can sit there <laughs> and like try to sound smart because I see the cards. But exactly. That exactly. does surprise me. Uh, hmm. But, but, but it could be that they have experience and he just like doesn't see Rabbit as the big, a big bluffer or whatever. Um, and to be fair, like it is kind of hard for Ravi to have bluffs there. He is gonna have to bluff his Queen Jack or Jack 10. Um plus all his missed spades, of course. But if Rodrigo doesn't think that he's gonna ever bluff Queen Jack or Jack 10, then probably the spades combos are not enough. Um and maybe Rodrigo thinks the same as me that if he's bluffing, he's just going to go all in because that's how he would match his biggest hands. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I'm just speculating. Maybe they see, maybe he thinks about the game differently. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, int very interesting, but also why it shows you in poker, there's not always one way just to play, right? There's a lot of different, a lot of different strategy, a lot of different goals in mind, a lot of different schools of thought and why poker is so fun because there's, you know, any given hand, someone's going to play or think differently. Sizings are different. You know, maybe he calls a smaller bet. Maybe he would have called the all in. It's just hard to know what people are thinking and what they think of the other person. And there is obviously history amongst the players. So we see yep. Ravid off to a good start. And uh, my man Gio's really opening it up. 10 7 suited under the gun <laughs> plus one into some, there's some jam stacks here. And he is, he is, he is going for it. And he is going to get out of the way as ace four suited. And Jack seven suited go to a turn. Yeah, I would imagine ace four is going to check back turn quite often here. I would usually check back flop as well, but the weakest ace X, I think. Uh, three way, you're not allowed to really put that much money in the pot here, especially when you have the chip leader in the pot as well. I would approach it quite passively. Curious to see if Oliver bluffs this or not now. I'm going to guess no, but uh, I wouldn't be shocked. Yeah, I mean he's got got some showdown. I Jack seven. Let's see. Queen comes in. Yeah, it's uh I'm I'm I, I will say on Super Millions, there's a lot of times where I do think that there's some unconventional lines thinking and you know it, it is fun to watch. Like these are the type of hands where if you're at home watching and you get it wrong or you see Espen or myself just kind of curious too. It's uh, it's always good to discuss. Those are the kind of hands you want to look at, try to understand what players are doing um and you know aggression rewarded as we saw there very much so yeah he does go for the check i mean you have enough bluff if bluffs if you just like bluff a bunch of your atex there like your atex of diamonds atex of clubs thing is you're gonna fold a lot of jack x and atex on the flop uh, if you don't have backdoor flush draw so you don't actually end up having that much atex and jack x um after calling flop there and everything else improves on the river, like 9-10 gets there, king-10, king-queen. Everything else improves, right? So you have to choose some of those bottom pairs to bluff there, I think, in all those shoes. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah. Well said. All right. Well, look at this. If we see the 10 7 suited King Jack off, certainly going to go. And Joyo is down to seven seconds of reconnect time. Unfortunately, he's got a, a playable hand there. I don't know with an under the gun open if he would decide to, to surf in his short stack, but no fold equity and a lot of players behind. But either way, feeling a little little sad for that that man that is getting dealt out. And Doberman, what is this worldwide? This is Mexico. We got possibly like Russia. <laughs> like people are having a. You know, hmm. a little a little unconventional where this happens at this, and people are just yeah, alias people are like, what's going on? No one understands what's happening. This is a this has been a bizarre start to the final table, and we've seen a couple a couple interesting folds and also some internet internet connection issues. What is uh what's next for you, Espen? Where are you gonna go for live poker? You got anything targeted? Anything anything set in stone coming up? Yeah, I go to Prague in three days. Just gonna spend uh, a weekend in Prague do some relaxing activities basically before WSOP Europe begins in Rosvadov on Monday. I mean, it's already running, but I'm going there on Monday to hop into the 25K that starts on Monday. I'm going to play the 25K, the 10K main, and probably the 50K as well. Um, and that's going to be it for me at WSOP Europe. And then I'm going to Vegas in December to play this um, thing at the win. I don't know if you'll be there. What's your plans? Yeah, I'd like to go for that. It's uh, not set in stone for me. The Bahamas has some stuff coming up right in January. I think mm -hmm. late in January, that looks cool. Pretty easy to get to. But the the one in, in the win is also looks pretty pretty juicy. That I'm telling you, man, wait wait till you have kids, Aspen. I told, I've talked to you numerous times. You get your traveling in, get your tournaments in, do your thing, because everything's sort of, uh, you, know, you know, you play everything by ear. It's hard to go do these, these tournament series. So enjoy while you can that type of total freedom and traveling and enjoy your uh, current. I mean, guys, this is the world series of poker main event champion took down 10 million, not very long ago. It, it, uh, you just gotta, you gotta understand that that's the dream, but you, there's different phases of life. And I'm sort of in the daddy husband relaxed be in one place mode for at least for tournaments doing some traveling still, but yeah, I hope, I hope to make both those, even if it's only for a few days. So we'll, uh, yeah. we'll see, maybe come in and then get out if it doesn't work out. But as we see here, fours multi-way, somehow fours are good on ACE Jack, ACE King for, for matchup on the deuce, eight, six, 10 queen. One of those spots where maybe he thinks he's good, but the river really hard to still be good. Although that is the case, maybe ACE King, Thinking about showdown value, ace jack off. You know, no one, no one really likes what's going on on the board here. Although Forrest does have a winner and 400k in the middle. Let's see if Geo's able to get to a river, or if Elias is gonna take a stab possibly in this 400k. Although that seems, as played, a bit ambitious. Let's go for the bluff. I was thinking if either Elias or Oliver goes for the bluff here. Um. I would imagine this gets true quite often. Force teams. Yeah. Nice. Nice play by Ellis. I like the little swirl. You see that little win thing? I think that's new, how they do it when you win yeah. the hand. A little nice addition. Nice you got to give, give GG <laughs> credit for the, the software, the upgrades, the updates, the, the emojis. We see some people drop some gifts in the chat. We also see, you know, there's some some Elkies and D-Nags, the... They got the custom, custom, uh, custom, custom emotes there. So yeah, this is a new feature on GG. If anyone's wondering, this is a ten thousand dollar tournament. Sundays that final table concludes on Tuesdays. I am your host Jeff Gross, Espen Yorstad. Joining us, the current WSOP reigning main event champion, just took down ten mil not long ago, and he is uh, he's all over the place playing. He played in Coin Rivet Invitational at two hundred k, and in Cyprus, he's in London. He's he's on tour, firing some high stakes and having some some big results how is how is the high stakes been how would you say your your sort of dive into the high stakes 25k plus world has been going in terms of feeling comfortable and also with with sort of overall running how, how has it gone um feel very comfortable like i i was thinking in cyprus if i was gonna feel like uh feel like i'm gonna get put in a bin in every hand or whatever you know but i wow we went for the three but fold with 15 there very nice that he avo avoids disaster there. I would have gone broke for sure. Uh, 15 bigs, I would have slammed it in. I believe. Anyways, yeah, no, it, it's been fun. Um, yeah, I mean, this was my goal all along to get to the highest stakes and compete there and eventually, hopefully, prove myself. 
Um, so that's what we're trying to do now. Bit of a bankroll boost this summer. So that gives me a bit more flexibility to play those tournaments naturally. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it is nice. It is nice to get off the good start. You know, you can go through different patches and variants and when you're, when you're running hot or you get a couple, couple scores early, it can make a big difference to not be digging out of the hole and questioning, questioning things. As we see the rich get richer, Geo goes for a nine, five suited Dolly Parton picks it up and here, Mr. Doberman's got the ace king and we see an all in from space four one one. This could be from Russian on Russian mm. uh, violence as we see the uh. ace king certainly not going to be able to fold and just has the decision. Does he want to shove? Does he want to call? Does call. Interesting. Yeah, I think. I don't know how much strategy you like to talk on these shows. Do you do you try to keep it light and talk about life more, or do you like some strategy talk in the mix? We like some strategy stuff. You know, I'm more I, I'm I'm more of a hybrid. I used to be diving deep in the poker streets. I, I like my game, but when we have the world champ on. We like to get some trade. I'll guess the audience. You can see we have the chat up on the side. If you guys like the the strategy talk, I know we like to do a mix. But yes, please don't have to ask. Anytime you want to drop some free knowledge, go ahead, Espen, and let us know what's on your mind. Yeah, no, I was just curious about the shove there under the gun for nine bigs, I think it was. Um, it seems kind of loose to me with ace and off. I think I would play the um, the race fold with ace and off there. Don't think I would be open jamming ace and off. I think ace jack off, I would open jam ace and suited. Ace jack off, ace and off would be right in the middle for me where I would rather just race fold it, I think. Mm -hmm. Um. That makes that makes perfect sense. Yeah, I think it's it's very close. He does run into the buzzsaw there, and we are down to eight sixty four thousand guaranteed. Uh, welcome sight to Joyo, who is probably borderline freaking out when he's blinding out when it's three hundred fifty three thousand a person. You're at a final table. That is not fun at all. And we wish that he gets back in, but uh, he does get the pay jump there. It's also something to think on there. I guess maybe that that could be some leveling too, right? That's when you see the short stack timed out. You're short. You know, if you raise, you're sort of inviting some some um violence on yourself there as well and maybe maybe just decided hey but you could also just fold right you could open fold is that or you say you would definitely min raise would be your first choice rather than fold with ace and off yeah no i mean you, you need to play a racing range there yeah. right you're not gonna play just open shove and fold um so the hands you want to be open racing uh to fold are going to be the hands that are just not good enough to shove right so if you're shoving ace jack off there, then ace ten off is the first candidate to raise fold, essentially. Maybe you open shove king queen off, then king jack off is your raise fold, right? Because yeah. you do want to be min raising uh, pocket aces, pocket kings, pocket queens, uh, all of those big pairs, and maybe like ace king suited, ace queen suited, stuff like that. You want to be min raising and not shoving. So you do need some bluffs in there as well. Yeah, I, I, I think that's spot on stuff. And... Here's the ace five, top and bottom missionary, nine on the turn. Still pretty good board for ace five, and he is going to complete that. Elias gets up to 3.3 million. He is currently in second place, Ravid in third, and Gio, who has been very aggressive, 4.5 million. And uh, there it is. Joyo's like, you know what? My internet's messed up. I got jack 10 off first in. I got I to gotta try to get some chips. I may not even, don't want to get blinded out. He is going to run into ace king suited, Rodrigo, who... Did make a difficult lay down earlier that was not correct in the moment. It's going to be coming to play here. So an important pot. If Joyo somehow can get there, he will have a get a double up plus more. If not, he will be out in eighth place. So ace king suited to jack 10. Let's see a flop here. It is on a king jack seven. So everyone got a little something. Three to one favorite. Hello. That's a big turn right there. That's hard to get. Spike Jack on the turn, and it is good for a double. 715,000 now keeps himself in the game. And Hayes is kind of like, man, this guy's blinding out. He's got no chips. He gets it in bad, and somehow I am now the short stack <laughs> with eight left. That is, uh, uh, that is, that is definitely not running good, but plenty of poker left. And, and Joyo now is uh, feeling a little better with his internet. Maybe a little RNG, right? A little lucky could have gone out before. Maybe had some good hands. We saw the sixes, the one hand where he was timed out early on. And unlucky for Rodrigo there, who's had a bit of a tough final table, making a fold that was not correct and then getting drawn out on. So see if the Brazilian can hunker in and get it done. Any Brazilians out there? Good to see you guys. A lot of familiar faces. Man, a lot of familiar faces. Appreciate you guys hitting that thumbs up. If you are enjoying the show, please do that and be eligible for the giveaway later today. It'll be a $50 or $100 GP Poker ticket. 
and Espen and I are playing for a dinner, a good one too. You know, we uh, we'll, we'll have a nice, be a nice dinner, whatever it is. What do you what do you think about Twitter? Elon Musk buying it and getting uh getting it done. Any any thoughts on that? Do you do you have any feelings on Twitter and and what's happening there? No, I I haven't been following it much. I saw that the deal finally went through now after a lot of back and forth and Dogecoin pumping on the result <laughs> as a result of that people expecting Elon to incorporate Dogecoin in some Twitter payments, I guess, which <laughs> I don't know. I haven't been following it that much, uh, so I don't have any I actually, high IQ things to say about it. Um, Kind of funny, funny story. I was randomly, so I was at ACL in Austin, hanging out with some friends and, you know, having a good time. It was late at night and, and all of a sudden Elon Musk just like popped in the room where I was at with like a group of friends in a hotel, like, you know, late in the, late at night came over and four hours later, we're sitting there like group of eight talking about, you know, nuclear war and politics, Ukraine, Russia, Twitter, everything. It was, it was pretty wild, right? Like I didn't know he was coming over, just showed up. And yeah, obviously the guys, you know, he's the richest man in the world, but he's also super intelligent. And that was, that was kind of uh that was pretty cool. Right. I, I don't get like starstruck or whatever, but he's, <laughs> he's got a real presence about him, you know, like you could just kind of feel it, the people are magnet magnet magnetized towards him and it was a cool experience that was like maybe three weeks ago i got to meet him that was that was fun but the the twitter deal i didn't think was going to go through right it kind of like died and this and that and then went through and then he's instantly moving people out and changing everything up so the guy the guy doesn't waste time that's for sure just kind of yeah yeah yeah. i think it's fair to be a little bit starstruck if you meet elon in real life Uh, i I would (laughs) for sure but but it was just funny because like it wasn't even like there was no like warning or like hey like you know he's coming by or something so like i was just hanging out in the room having a drink and then i looked up and he's there and she's like oh like like, what's up man like yeah so it was very cool four or five suited geo good enough to ship it in joyo gonna fold there and we are still eight-handed we have seen one elimination and joyo is off and running got a chance it starts with one he's one of the three players you're looking for you have, you have a nice little pocket there sort of like a roulette board for the audience at home you got three um, in a row you can focus on that lower left kind of middle lower left of who you want to do well if you're going to get the bonus you do win the ticket you have a chance at 100 instead of 50 it will be 50 so it's uh we'll we'll keep on rolling and, and geo's having a field day on the button so far has been some very disciplined stuff by mr doberman here he folded jack nine suited under the gun earlier which i liked but now he folded queen jack off in the cutoff as well and i, and I get it he has alice in the big blind which covers him and he has geo on the button which is cheap leading of course so you do have to be very tight in that spot but queen jack off I think I would have opened. I might be wrong, actually. It's probably very, very close. Like, I think Quint and off and Jack and off are very easy folds. Queen Jack off, I would open. But uh, I could be wrong. Very disciplined, at least. He's playing very snug. Mr. Doberman. Fighting here... nine series as well versus tens, which is as expected, of course. Yeah, a couple really short stacks and does, does just not want to make a get it all in. Of course, the risk premium is pretty high or no. Mr. Doberman doesn't want to go out in eighth or seventh place when he is currently sort of on the, in the middle of the pack there. So plays a cautious and Oliver gets a below average flop and a welcoming turn now only really losing in theory to King Jack, of course, a set of Queens or aces that would flat, although that would flat a lot of, and then, and then check this flop on that kind of board. So effectively the nuts in his mind, let's see what he goes with size wise. It's a very wet board, right? There's, three to a Broadway going on there. There's two flush draws. So maybe a bigger size in here, closer to pot or like two, 250, something meaty, I would say, but does go 250. There you we're go. Now Espen, you know, we've been, we've been, we, there you we're go. not playing a ton of poker, but we're, we're focused and <laughs> we get to do the show every week and it's fun. And I see, I see a lot of familiar faces. What's up, Kurt? I do not. I do spend some time in Vegas, but I do not live there. Um, we are joined by the world champ. Yes, that is Espen. That's correct. That, Espen, I've never really hanging out. I feel like we've gotten a, we've done a lot. We've done a couple podcasts, got to meet you guys. Stayed at my house in 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 uh, Miami, and now here we are on the show. So we've gotten we've we've got to spend a fair amount of time together, and hopefully hopefully we'll see each other more often and, and get to hang out. I know your content has been pretty active. Can you maybe tell the viewers where they can follow and sub- take a look at what you got going on in your life, what what your current kind of social media output is. Yeah, I mean, we've been vlogging. Let's see this all in first. Ooh, Rodrigo in. on the Ooh. very 
Wow. Wow. Sweaty, sweaty turn right sweaty, there. Sweaty, sweaty turn. He's got a lot of board coverage, and it is just not going to nope. be for our Brazilian Rodrigo, who goes out and, I mean, kind of crazy, shoves 8-6 suited. He is, yeah. I mean, that is uh, not how he drew it up today for sure. But look at his, look at that result. I, I thought I recognized him 47th overall in the Super Millions rankings, almost a million in earnings, just going to be under that now with today's score of eighth place and then over 5 million now in GG Poker winning. So very impressive Brazilian. Congrats to him, but I, I'm sure it doesn't feel like a congrats as it's seven handed, 82,000 locked up to the remaining pool. And, yeah, that's uh, always painful. His way. But um, especially yeah, when he came in with quite a bit of chips and just lost every pot that he played basically and then out of here. Yeah. He's not happy yeah. about this result for sure. But yeah, he, he's yeah. been in the mix. He's uh, been playing for a long time and very accomplished. So he, I'm sure he can handle it well. It's not a new new scenario for him. So, yeah, anyways, um, we're doing vlogging since the WSP Madman's. We've been vlogging quite a bit. We've been doing um vlogs for all the poker stops i've been going to basically uh not doing any like daily vlogs like going to the gym and studying and all that shit i don't think people really are uh connected with me enough to start to create that kind of content just yet i don't know if i will in a future reader probably not for now we're just doing poker stops so we've been vlogging uh triton where i played everything from 25k up to a 200k we've been vlogging miami played a 25k um really a 50k there as well i think so yeah yeah i played a 50k in miami vlogged that uh vlogged some nosebleeds cash games in la at hustler live which has been all over the place lately with the uh, robbie and uh, adelstein thing uh vlogged dpt london vlogged what else yeah i'm gonna vlog at wsp europe now coming up as well so we're pumping out content the youtube channel is just you can find it by searching my name, Espanulen Njørstad. Uh, link is youtube.com slash ulenpoker, I believe. And yeah, and then Ulen Poker on Instagram where I'm spamming spamming stories about daily life, basically. And that's that's pretty much it. We've been thinking. I, I want to get back into streaming because I used to stream quite a bit on Twitch. And I think I'm going to get back in the mix there as well. Start doing some streaming on YouTube uh, of the online sessions. I don't play like super... I don't play that much online anymore, but I do fire sessions on Sundays when I'm in London and maybe one more day a week uh, going forward. So I'm thinking to do some streaming of that, maybe stream some study sessions uh, on YouTube just to get some more content out there, trying to grow the subscriber numbers. And uh, it's not easy. It's not easy. I feel like the we're, we're, we're trying pretty hard, but um, in the beginning phases, it feels kind of, um, yeah, I don't know. I think I'm at like 4K subs or something now. So yeah, we'll see. Yeah, it's it's a. Uh, I actually see some people in the chat right now asking about uh, if I will stream more. I mean, I look, I put in a lot of time, effort streaming for years. It's something I love, but I focused on the podcast and this weekly show. There's still preparation takes time, and you know, as you know, the content grind is a. You need a team. You need full time commitment. It's not something you just show up one day. Things are good. You kind of yeah. got to be consistent. So I think what more likely, what I'd like to do is the next World Series of Poker online on GG. I'd love to come in and sort of. Be set up and ready to go. Uh, I think likely I'd be in Brazil and, and do that and set a set aside nice. uh, set aside like a month because it is fun, man. It's fun to stream winning a bracelet yeah, online. Yeah. I, it's as good as it gets. <laughs> that would be that's sort of the the dream. So um, you know, we'll uh, sure. wow, look at this. Look at this man. This man came with the plan today. Geo <laughs> just coming in. He's opening light. Savage. They usually say open light, three bet tight, or open tight, three bet light. He's just doing it all. <laughs> he's doing. He's he's coming with the heat today. Geo going for the. The spot and Oliver kind of gets put in a bin here with ace eight off and is uh it's one of those hands, right? It's very tricky. It's a very tricky spot to continue. You don't really want to flat this hand, but also are you willing to put in that 900 K, you know, that 875, the, the, the 1 million. Yeah, there it is. 800. <laughs> he does click it back and sets the tone. And I mean, there's, there's, there's reasonable and unreasonable to take it back over the top. I mean, is it just seems not reasonable, but man, they're deep enough. They're deep enough and the situation does present itself. Um, but the six, five off just, yeah. Like, all right, nice, nice hand, Oliver. You get to win that one. That's that's, that was a lot. Yep. Seems like yeah. he was on to him. Like a eight off is a very light four bet there, I would say, but um, he, he probably had like a good idea of what was going on there. If a yeah. geo is in the mix with five, six off there, then yeah, you can four bet a lot, of course. Yes. 
Yes, that is. Uh, yeah, well, well done. Nice, nice hand though. It's fun to see the boys playing. It's fun when guys are going for it. You can't say there's any nut pedaling here. We've seen a few aggressive lines, and and this is Geo going to actually put Mr. Doberman in a tough spot. He just this is going to be a tough spot for sure. Yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> uh, it is going to be for sh- very, very tough. Can you and, fold here? I, I think I would take a flop here actually with Ace Nine of Clubs uh, as much out of line as Geo has been so far. I think you just have to take a flop. Snap folds. Playing very snug, Mr. Doberman. I get it though. Like you have you have one 10 big blind stack and one like eight, no, seven big blind stack. So yeah. I think actually that might be a very good fold. Seems close. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh it is it is close than the AC. You take a flop there or what do you do, Jeff? Man, I mean situationally when you know you do have to really it's so, it's so cool because you see hazes and you see Joyo so short, right? So you are really putting yourself in a, in a, in a bad spot to possibly, you know, risk like real money by getting cooler or, or getting out flopped or getting out played. So I, I think, I mean, personally, I'm on the tighter side, I would fold and I would hate it. But even then there's, there is that portion of it where you are actually behind, right? Like as we see that in that spot would have been in a tough spot. It's kind of hard to realize yeah. with the ACE you're act to, to be able to necessarily, you know, feel comfortable you play for it all or you flop some kind of draw and you get committed into it or, or putting more chips in so I, I like a fold there um the problem is you know that he knows that right he just did it with five six offsuit so it's um i think yeah. i would go for a fold and, and and just feel like i'm getting taken advantage of would be my actual answer yeah so that's the thing with icm though you're allowed to take advantage of people when you have the chip lead it's one of the benefits of playing a more aggressive style before the final table Yes, you're going to bust more often and make the final table less. But when you do make the final table, you're going to have some chips and you can bully some people around. So, no, that's the upside of that. Yes, well said. Very well said. Here we see Ace 5 suited. Go ahead, go to work. Ravid, two players that certainly know each other, have played some of the highest stakes online in battle. And oh, both are very healthy. Four million and three million chips. We do sort of see a. Uh, I mean, this is gonna. This could get down short pretty quick. Although we do see tens here, possibly getting a nice flip spot. Although, I mean, look, the East Jack off based on how Gio's been playing. I don't think he's <laughs> certainly not folding this hand. Let's see if he's gonna go for aggression or flat. Although I like the the spot and and interesting. I guess it's just gonna get all in here with Hazes, and then Oliver will get out of the way. So. We'll get to see a coin flip with a bonus for Hazes. He's got an extra 110 in the middle. Plus, he's got small blind in the ante. So this is like a, you know, this is a huge spot for for Hazes to get some extra chips in a in a favorable, slightly favorite position. Unlucky that Oliver doesn't have an ace or a jack. So it is a close to a pure flip. Of course, tens the slight advantage. Yeah, very easy all in with tens, I think. Um, versus pretty out of line tree bitter. And Ace Jack has got work to do. Hazes is running hot and not anymore. Okay. He puts the Elky into a WAP and he has still got some outs. He does get it done the hard <laughs> way. Gives the hello. He got the full ring of emojis there. And it is it is absolutely all on the table. Haz is still in the game. And Joyo, who's had quite an emotional roller coaster today with internet issues, gets Ace Jack suited here and doesn't look like he'll have a customer for this all in, and he is going to chip up a bit more. So, yeah, Hazes and, and Joyo doing their best to stay in, a couple of their big stacks, and we have got a lot of poker left. Thank you all for joining us today. This is every Tuesday, 245 Eastern. We will be on. I got a bunch of confirmed guests, some really cool ones coming up, and, of course, you can't really get more cool, more fun than the, the main event champ. How, has that sunk in? Has anything changed for you? Have you had time to sort of digest? You won $10 million from a 10K buy-in. You're also Patrick Leonard and yourself won the tag team. So you had quite a, a high on, I will, let's call it right. Like I, I talk with, you know, this happens with athletics and athletes and people and, and musicians and concerts. Like they have these huge spikes of emotion and, and moments. Like how do you find yourself when you go play a 2K or the 5K somewhere or something like a, a, uh, a tournament, like, or just a regular day online? Like, do you find yourself kind of missing something like to have that had, you know, playing for $10 million on ESPN? Like how, how do you get that sort of feeling to back or, or have you, have you, or do you just accept what it is? Cause that's hard to match that. I haven't really had that big spike of emotions 
since it happened, I guess. I, I'm not sure if it's really that it hasn't sunk in or maybe I'm just like not programmed like that. I uh, haven't really felt it much. Like people were actually trolling me really hard at EBT and I because I was stalling on the bubble of the 2K. <laughs> so I played the 2K uh, UK IPT high roller event. And uh, right before the money, I was short stack. And I, I was like taking my time with the decisions. I wasn't like Omega stalling, but I was like playing pretty slow because we were like two of the money or whatever. And people were like, uh, what are you doing? You won 10 million this summer. You don't care about this min cash. And I was like, no. You're here to play a game. It's a strategy game. You want to play it well. You like the strategy before money is to take your time. So you're more likely to get into the money. It's a strategy game. It's not like, of course, those uh, 3K pounds or whatever is not going to change my life, but it's still money. And the moment you lose respect for money like that, and you're just like, yeah, I'm rich now. So I can just like punt around. Uh, why would you, pl why would you keep playing then? Like if you're not going to try to play the game well, then what are you doing there? Yeah, well, Haas is speaking of playing the game well, is just calling here and has himself in a pretty good spot. King Deuce off completely out oh, of line, God. min three bet calls. And now we are going to get to see a spot where uh, Geo has literally very little to no equity here. <laughs> um, it is going to be interesting if he's able to slow down at all or if he just kind of tell, decides he's going to bet and rip it in or, or bet, bet, bet once, I think. Now, this is a board actually that in theory is probably a little scary for Hazes. I don't think he has many flats, right? With like these middle pairs or, you know, maybe queen 10 suited. I, I'm just curious what Gio's going to come with here. I would imagine he's going to bet small and he does do that. I would just give up in Gio's shoes here. Like Hazes flatting range is going to be like aces, kings, and then like some suited Broadway type stuff. Like this board connects super well with Hazes as a range and having a hand as trashy as this. Like you're essentially hoping that your opponent has like, I don't even know like what you're hoping for here, like King Queen of Clubs and you're blocking that King Queen of Hearts. Not blocking that, but still like this, yeah, I would just give up on the flop here. Um, I like Hazes' this, this, uh, pre-flop call a lot. When people are this out of line, you have to give them some rope and this, yeah. I wonder if he just, no, you can't just stick it in there. Hmm. I, I still want to give up in Gio's shoes here. No, no, it does seem like it does give up. And Hazes has pretty easy jam, I think. Just to protect. It's like the most dicey board ever. And you only have half pot to play. I think you just need to stick it in now to protect your equity. No. Yeah, so I mean, interesting, you know, Geo going for it there, and does uh, Hazes does get an extra extra bet out of him, nicely played, up to one point two million all of a sudden. And Joel is our short stack off of exactly about ten blinds here. Ace deuce off, Mister Doberman folding the button, maybe a function of Geo being so aggressive and doesn't really want to get tied into a weird one, but that that seems tight to me. Uh, that's I, I think that's very standard. I would fold ace seven off there. I would fold ace eight off, gets close, I think. Uh, you're opening into like uh, the guy that has the least to lose in the big blind, the like by far the shortest right now, Joyo. And you have the chip leader in the small blind who's been a, very active. So I think you have to just tighten up a lot there. And ace twos to ace eight off, I think, are super easy folds. Yeah. I would say. Yeah, it's 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 fun. I mean, it's 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 curious, and we're getting seeing aces getting tossed around here. And Oliver Weiss, king queen suited, you get three bet by Mister Doberman. It is uh, this is kind of this is tough, right? You're it's like the you the the implied odds. You realize you're probably behind. You are now though. You're such a pretty looking hand. It seems so hard not to take a flop, but man, you're dominated <laughs> a lot of the time. This one, I yeah. Wow, discipline. Yeah. Very He's probably aware as well that Doberman has been really in line. He's been playing very snug and tight. Yeah, also a Joyo too. Again, this is why it's so it's so interesting. Although, like intuitively, you're like, oh, this guy's short. Joyo, maybe all the less reason why he's not messing around. But that's also why you can get away with some stuff, right? When there is situations like that, and you use it to your advantage. 
Um, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Curious if the Oberman opens this. Wow, he does actually fold, yeah. He's playing very tight. He's playing very tight. Yeah, this is, uh, this, I'm making some notes, guys. If you like the, the show, of course, the weekly highlights either on my YouTube channel or on GG's YouTube channel, we do have those from prior guests. I think this is my 23rd show today for taking over the Super Millions. I got to say, it's been a pleasure. Appreciate so many of you coming in. New faces, old faces. We do love to do giveaways and we love also to watch some of the best in the world and a lot of interesting hands. I mean, the, the highlights have been fun. There's been so many great calls, big folds, big bluffs. Uh, Victor Malinowski seems to make, ooh, look at the King 10 Hazes putting it I was in. really curious if it was going to fight our jam bomb. Seems very close for me. Um, yeah, that is, that is, that is definitely very, very close. And Elias running a solid game, chipping up, and he has got 2.8 million. Does get out of the way there. Oliver also 3 million, been pretty smooth. Joyle's had quite a ride, internet and otherwise, but he is, he has chipped up. I mean, if you're, if you're, Joyle, you're feeling good at the moment. You're down to already seven. You were the shortest stack and you're disconnected. You guaranteed 82,000. 353, though. It's a little different, and we do see the next jump will put us into the six-figure club. Always a big deal. Um, we are we are going to see who gets this done today. Do you have any any picks? I mean, obviously we did our draft earlier, but who who's impressed you so far? Anyone do you feel like based on their seat and kind of how it's playing out? Anyone that that you are impressed with? Uh, I think Oliver and Alice have both been playing well. Um, Joyo, we haven't seen too much from. He's been kind of handcuffed by his stack. Geo has been fun to watch. <laughs> uh, yeah, Doberman bit a bit too tight in my opinion, but yeah, I like it actually. Actually, it might be the perfect adjustment given just like how out of line Geometria has been. Uh, it might be that Mr. Doberman was aware of this from final three tables, final two tables, whatever, that he was aware that uh, Geo was playing super out of line. So his decision was, okay, I'm just going to knit it up. And let him knock people out might be a very good adjustment actually so no yeah. yeah making some notes on hands time stamping every week guys i do uh appreciate you guys in here if any hand blows your mind let us know i'd say there's been the hand of the day has to be ravid for me so far or at least one of them where he got the, the ace jack to fold that was that stood out to me on the the lead turn go big go big river Rodrigo getting off and and here now 10-7 a bit of a problem he's got top pair turned he's got a gut shot he had a diamond for backup which would not have been good if a diamond had even come so Oliver has a million in the middle has his opponent drawing dead very clean at river no board pair no diamond blind on blind nine high flush thinking about value here he's got a SPR stack to pot ratio of about one does go for the jugular and man tough spot yeah. tough tough spot for for Haas's and Joyo loves it Joyo looking for another 22 stacks coming his way by just being in there I'm out of the tournament if I'm Hazes here I'm done see you <laughs> next yeah yeah, I think so, yeah. right? You got the diamond and you turn top pair. You're getting bluffed. There's a lot of hands. Jack Queen with the diamond. Any one diamond, big, no, big diamond. There's 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 bluffs. There's there's stuff. And yeah. and really it's like you're basically repping a flush or not, and you have a seven and it's blind on blind. And it's it's uh it would be a pretty remarkable. I think probably goal. straights, probably straights uh jam here as well, right? I, I would yeah. imagine that like the minimum you would have to jam here is a straight. You block seven five, you block seven nine, and you block yeah. flushes. I mean, yeah, he's got, he's got a, bluffs by having the tunnel as well. Yeah, exactly. So he's that's yeah, he's kind of um, both cards got, are really good for calling, essentially. Right. Yeah, it would almost be like a bad fold that would be great, or it's such a good fold that it's almost <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Well, I mean, I guess you say great fold, right? Yeah, like the thing is, you just have to be right. Yeah. Apparently, like if you fold and you're right, it's like spectacular. Um, yeah. but, uh, yeah, that's man. Oh, he gets to live to see another day. I would not. Yeah. And Joyo, very unlucky for him. You know, one, 
perspective is not the same for the other. So he is not feeling good about that. He's going to be even more sick when he sees that he got away from a world-class lay down and geo in the big blind wow this could get interesting oliver weiss kind of the perfect hand to play back king jack suited and ace queen off this could this could be a big pop uh, curious how this goes very curious eight nine suited has to fold um i believe i'm just curious what geo is gonna do and then what oliver is gonna do why are we flats i don't like that he's been playing so tight and then it decides to flat here that seems um that's interesting. People were saying that in the chat that top pair was not. Oh, and it doesn't squeeze. This hand is <laughs> very interesting already. Very different from what I would expect to happen. Um, but yeah, I, for people were saying that the previous hand, like top pair, is not good enough. But top pair is actually like this specific top pair is way better than having three of a kind or two pair or anything like this, right? Uh, this specific top pair is like the best top pair you can have. And you don't have to, you shouldn't think about poker in like uh, absolute strength of the hand. You should think of it in relative strength uh, in terms of your blocker effects. And his blocker effects were amazing there, much better than having two pair or three of a kind. Yeah. Yeah. He's going for a healthy sizing. And, you know, as played, I think Oliver probably thinks a lot of three betting with some ace X, and this is for sure going to catch him off guard. He also doesn't have neither player with the spade. So, you know, Oliver has every reason to believe his hand can be can be good here. There's a bit of a tough spot. He does call six of spades on the river, could kill some action, but one million in the middle and a very important pot for this final table. Ravid quietly up to four million. We have the two shorter stacks, Mr. Doberman hanging her out at 1.5, but we are one hour into the show. We've lost two players, and it is very exciting lineup today. We've seen some cool poker going on. See what happens. I was thinking what I would do in Geo's shoes here. What do you think? I think I would bet like one third here. I think yeah, our block. hand is not good enough to go bigger anymore. Yeah, blocker is sort of value-ish. Not, not necessarily blocker, but just you want to get something out. You don't want to let a worse ace check back. You also don't expect probably to get raised a lot unless the, you know, if the player does have the flush. But uh, he does go, yeah, 240. I like this. Yeah, good size. Makes Quarter sense. pot. And really gross spot for Oliver here. <laughs> really, really gross. I think you have to fold. Like, you, like, 5 7 got there, spades got there. Uh, I don't know. 6 5 might just check river. So you're basically hoping to be like queen 10 with a spade or jack 10 with a spade. But those hands are so intuitive to just bet big as a bluff on the river. It's very counterintuitive to go for the small size when you're blocking. Like if you have like queen 10 off here with a spade, uh, I think most people will just auto put that into a big sizing and not, uh, not bluff enough for this size effectively. Yeah. Good well, fold. Very good fold. And Geo is off to 4.5. Oliver's still hanging on 3.1 million. And man, Joyo finds a timely Queens where he looks like it's probably going to just get shoved blind yeah. on blind, right? I mean, this is for sure. Yeah. And this 100 is 100 shove. And what a, he's in what, trouble. <laughs> Gio. What a spot. What a spot for Joyo. Can't believe he's going to see no overcard, no pair, Queen nine <laughs> off about one of the dream scenarios. There are some sweaty situations though and uh let's find a find a nine okay, halfway Never, there pretty easy he's got 4.55 percent one to come can he fade the nine that would be grotesque and ooh, looked looked like faded. potential but it is faded and it is back in and hey Hazes and joy are kind of jockeying at the bottom until they're not right they doubled it this is a whole new game mr doberman has got the 1.5 million we see him playing a snug brand Hazes with King 10 off the taxi shot, the Houston, Texas in the building. Guys know what I'm talking about. We've got a ton of action still to come. And Haas's let's go, Mr. Dober. And we see how he's been playing. And Geo's just kind of had a license to go to town here. Let's see if Mr. Doberman does go for the Queen Jack in this spot. Geo re respects it. He sees he's been pretty tight. Chat was asking me what I'm drinking. I'm drinking um, sparkling water with raspberries. And I'm actually out, so I'm going to get a new one. Two 
All right, well, Mr. Doberman does take that as Esping refreshes himself. We are going to see if we can play to a winner in a relatively reasonable amount of time. These have been amazing final tables, about two and a half hours, say two hours. This one, this one's shaping up, hard to say. Blinds are 30, 60. It's always hard to tell because even if we lose players, the stacks are deeper. So say so yeah, in general, people are asking how long. It's about two hours. This is 353,000. Again, reminding you, this is from Sunday. The ten thousand dollar buy-in tournament. Play to the final table Sunday. Come back Tuesday. Uh, probably the you know Tuesday makes it's the biggest one of the biggest days of the week for online poker. I would say is that I believe it's usually Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday. Is that fair, Espen? Would you say in the ranking order of, of days? Maybe Saturday. I feel like Saturday doesn't get a ton of action. Yeah. Maybe maybe depends. I I'm not. I haven't been playing the online tournament daily grind for a while, so I'm not as familiar with what the current pecking order is on days. Yeah, I would probably rank it something like Sunday, Thursday, Tuesday, Saturday, Friday, Wednesday, Monday. Ooh, and look at this action. Three real With hands. With Sunday being Here's way a... better. Yeah, Sorry. Sunday, Sunday in a world of its own. And Elias can't believe it. He's got a great spot. I and mean, Gio's just going to get off with losing one blind here. And Joel now a four to one dog, nine to aces. Can he keep in the game? Is Ilias just going to run away and get it done? And no, wow. nine is fine for Joyo. He is now, it would have been set over set for Gio. And can he fade the river two outer? So confusing. It is not an ace from space. We see two million going to Joyo. The man who lost his internet has not lost his way. He is <laughs> on the rocket ship up. We see the gifts are out and Gio can't believe it. He saved some money. He would have lost set over set. He would probably would have been been calling there and joyo is uh maybe gonna find the internet again and just go for it ace jack off he is opening up and Elias, a little bit of adversity isn't tournaments crazy like you win that you got 3.7 million guaranteed 100 you're down to six everything's relaxed now you're at 1.7 you're in a dog fight and now you're dominated in a hand out of position by the guy that just hit a two out of poker is funny life's funny it's a metaphor it's always not about what happens, how you react to what happens. Let's see if Elias can settle in here. And he is now, again, he's behind. He's got a gut shot, but likely see Joyo go for a small bet or a check. He does go for a smallish bet and ace 10 suited. No backdoor clubs. This is a little bit dicey to start peeling, but I don't know. You're drawing the nuts. You're in position. Maybe the player slows down. You also hit the card that that's gin. Maybe two pairs your opponent or something spicy and you can get it all. Uh, as played, though, it does go bet call, likely Gonna see Joyo. The king got to be concerned about king queen. Don't really probably not concerned about a set of twos. You block jack, so kind of king queen's like the hand that jumps out at you as a problem. Other than that, you know, there's uh, maybe ace queen that flats possibly. There's some other pairs that possibly flats. But what what do you put them on here when you get called? Is that kind of what you're thinking? Like king queen, queen ten suited, maybe ace queen, ace ten. Queen ten suited would probably fold the pre. Um, yeah. yeah, there's ace ten of off would fold the pre. So you're up against like ace queen off, ace ten suited, um, king queen sure, king jack suited I guess, which is only one combo, only the king jack of hearts left, so that's not a big worry. Um, wow, <laughs> that's surprising. That's surprising. Ellis likes likes to battle. He does not like to give up. And maybe Joyo know this, and he's like, "Fuck! I don't want to call the river here. I'm just gonna fall now." <laughs> he knows wow. he's gonna get put in on the river, and so on. Doesn't want to deal with it. I don't know, but that's a surprising fall. Because only one yeah. like tiny bet went in on the flop. It was like B thirty, right, on the flop? Yeah. Yeah, that was, and he let out and then got flatted. I'm, I'm a bit surprised there, but you know, this is, uh, look at this coming in. Joyo actually gets after gets some chips, been pretty active, having playable hands, and now gets instantly three bets. So Elias doesn't have to stew long. Pretty big, um, pretty big swing there. Elias back up to two point three million. That could have been dicey for him if he had. It would be interesting to see if he got flatted on the turn on on a lot of rivers. What happens, but. As played, we are going to see Ravid Darby yeah. pick it up over four million. Geo with four million as well. So these guys kind of tied for the chip lead. And then you got a two point three million, two point nine. Mister Doberman hanging steady at one point five. Blinds are thirty k, sixty k. Payouts are in your lower right, and we are 
we are watching some big action here. Geo been super aggressive. Jack 10 suited now in the small blind. They, he's really been attacking Oliver. Yeah. I could see this going either way. Flat or three bets. He's three bet him so much. There it is. It's consistent. I could see this getting four bet again. Seems like a very good candidate to just put in the four bets here. It's that or call, I guess. But calling here is also, ugh. You're in position, which is a good thing. Wow. Wow. Could not have asked for a worse flop for Oliver here. Pretty sick. 952 in the middle. Geo he is in position now. Has I'm sorry. His first act is out of position, but he now has the best hand by a country mile. He is got to uh, avoid a running straight or an ace, and he's got 952 uh, in the middle. Gonna be a gonna this be a is such a where, blank as well. Yeah, he goes for the 285k bet out into a million. So he had 20, what 25, 20. Is, is, 30, he's, 30. he's got he's got 30 percent bet and oliver's got a really tough i mean obviously going nowhere on this board has thinking about what to do i guess you have to call him. you have to call. just call right. there's no way you can like try to get more money in the pot here i think yeah. like the moment you just get it all in you're up against like tens jacked and suited or an over pair usually right you can like get it in versus king queen sometimes maybe like king queen of spades or whatever but then like you're still flipping <laughs> and flipping with the chip leader when you have a bunch of people shorter than you on a final table, not really what you want to do. So you just have to try to put as little chips into the pot as possible when you're all over here, I think. I think this is going to go like B30 again, probably. He has like such a lock on the board. Seems unnecessary to bet much bigger, I guess. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's it's actually it's a it's not the greatest turn, right? The king queen completes. You do pick up the diamond draw for backup, and you just have the best hand as well. But I, I would say the nine, you know, the ace and the nine are the it goes ace to nine in terms of the the worst cards that could come. Yeah. And he yeah. did get the nine. It is a diamond, however, so it feels okay. And if you're Oliver, though, like you're also you're not you're not loving things. You're not loving things. Definitely just, not. This is such a gross spot. I think I would fold. Honestly, I would much rather continue uh, Queen Jack or King Jack suited, I think. Something where you can at least draw to something, you know? Ace Jack is like, you could be drawing dead, you could be drawing to very little outs. Oh, wow. And now he has to bluff it if it goes check, which it will. I, I will assume Gio will check here, and then Oliver has to bluff his hand, right? He never gets here with worse hands, and he doesn't have any better bluffs. Like, this has to be the nut bluff combo for him, right? Lock is queen. Lock queen jack. I don't know. Curious how this goes. Man. What do you think? Hey, this is such a sick hand. Yeah, I guess it goes... I mean, does he ever block her better? I guess he checks. And then Oliver... I I'm super curious. I don't even know. I mean... Man, it's it's scary to bluff though. If you get checked to here, it really is kind of scary to just fire it. But you're right. You kind of have one of the best hands here. I just don't know. Maybe exploitatively, yeah. Oliver maybe just doesn't feel like going going for it. But you're you're right. I mean, oh, you have to go for it here. You have to go for it. You one point one point five million. <laughs> you have to. You don't get here worse. Like, okay, you have ace-10 of diamonds you can get here with, sure. But outside of that, you don't have anything worse, basically. Wow, audience, tense moments here. These are one of those ones where, as Espen is illustrating, you know the right play, you know you're supposed to do it, but I know that you know, but what is my opponent going to do? And what what can, you know, it's a, it's really a hard call without... Oh, things. I like those, it. Oh, like small it. and geo geo who just can't really believe the run out right the nine on the turn he gets diamond so maybe he's probably still good and then he gets the river and it just doesn't feel good and oh well played. oliver beautiful hand there very nice hand for oliver uh Elias shows his hand and gene man nicely done from oliver really nice best hand before the flop 
stuck in there, didn't have a winner on the river, but found a way. And now Mr. Doberman, King Queen off. Ravid's been fairly aggressive. King Queen definitely one of the hand candidates for a, a three bet light and King Queen off. And Ravid has to, I think, respect Mr. Doberman. has been playing such a solid game. This just, just can't really flat here. And Very big sizing he's going for. I saw when he had aces as well, he sized up quite. He went pretty big, I think. Um, seems to like the big, big three bets. Yeah. Gets it through there. Well played. I really like that hand from Oliver. I, I think I would... You don't really need to size up that much though because it's so hard for you to have bluffs there. But but then again, like I could see Geo just not finding a fold with some King Jack. He doesn't really have King Jack, I guess. Like if he has a set, maybe he just like convinces himself. Uh, like, I don't know. But yeah, it worked. I like nice it. Nice hand. Very nice hand. Oliver is going to go ahead and get himself the chip lead after that. And we see Mr. Doberman chipping up still. Ilias is staying strong. Hazes with sixes. And now Gio with sevens. Interesting here. He's been active. A little different situation, though, with his stack size. Although Hazes off of no. the, the, the stack size here against an active player. Joyo's sitting out. He's opening. I mean, it just seems... Seems hard to imagine any other thing. It's hard to get dealt sixes seven-handed against an aggressive player. So let's see if we're going to see the, the shove in the call. Oliver also had an ace. So did Ravi, but rag aces. And Hazes has survived so long. He made that nice fold with top pair. We saw 10-7 off right where the flush came through. But is he going to be able to maneuver it? Is, it? is there a chance Joyo's just sitting out? I mean, like at this point, like is he? he's just... I've never seen so much internet issues at a final table, and he did spike a magical nine to be at two million and stay in the game. But here's Geo. He's got one forty out there. He's calling another what five hundred total because uh, he's got ninety four behind. I mean, this is one of those ones where it's going to be flipping most of the time. You're not loving it with sevens here. No, you're not loving it. Like sixes is already really close. I think I'd probably fold sixes in his shoes. It's super close. Maybe just because Geo has been so out of line, he feels like he kind of has to go with it. Versus like um, a rather tight opener. I think Sixes has to go in the muck here. Um, so yeah, I think Geo has to call sevens just because of his image. But in a normal setting, it could be that you're just supposed to fold sevens here. He does go for he it. So we'll it. see a four to one. Last time we would have seen a set for sevens, which would not have been good versus a set of nines. This time seven sixes. Nice start for sevens. Has the spade blocked. Look at wow. this. A little sweaty turn, although it's got to be a deuce or a seven, and it is a spade that is nothing relevant to Haas's. He will be out in seventh place. We are down to six. Winner, winner. My man says running hot, and there he is. Haas's with some super million scores, 1.6 million on GG. Nice showing, my friend. And we are guaranteed six figures with six players remaining. Let us know who you think is going to win at home. We have a, a dinner wager, myself and Espen. You guys are still all doing well for the audience, right? For the $100 versus the $50 ticket giveaway. Eligible by clicking the thumbs up and then typing in the, the keyword at the end of the stream. But so far, Geo, Joy, and Elias are your three players. So good start for the audience with three for three remaining when nine started. So 50% chance roughly to get a hundred dollar ticket welcome in everyone thank you for letting us know where you're watching from hope you're enjoying espen's here try to take a few questions as well um, while we're calling the action but six hand and now it's fast and furious and we have got to see a lot of cool hands today so far hope you're enjoying i know i am and espen do appreciate the time he's over in the uk it's dark it's late and it doesn't go unnoticed appreciate the uh the, the time today yeah it's just eight o'clock here which is um yeah, it's the middle of the day with my sleep schedule, basically. <laughs> Waking up like 11 p.m. or noon these days. So it's not too late. Happy to be here. It's actually like, I usually watch these final tables anyways, just for uh, research on players and to have some cool stuff, spots to study in ICM. Um, so yeah, I really enjoy this, this show and I appreciate the effort you're putting on to run this show every week. Really yeah. like it. Awesome, man. I appreciate that. And yeah, it is. I, I always say the same. Like for me, it doesn't feel like work. I know a lot of times the guests obviously volunteering and coming in here and, and spending time, but it is kind of it's sort of like a forced study session, right? And a lot of these guys you do play with frequently. So, you know, I'm sure there's some interesting hands and notes and 
stuff you're taking in here. And Mr. Doberman gets another, look at these four hands, all a little something, some Broadways, some suited 910. We got Ace Jack suited Oliver, been fairly active. Mr. Doberman could maybe try to use his image here, although he'd be stepping into it a little bit. And Joyo is also with a modest hand in the big blind. Let's see what Mr. Doberman comes up with, 1.7 million chips. Those fold. I like that fold. Yeah. I think it's good. That's why I was so, so surprised he involved himself with 8-9 suited out of position earlier in kind of a similar spot. I think this was quite similar. Um, so, yeah. Uh, DB asks, what is the shortest stack I will raise fold? That I will raise fold. Um, on a final table, you can play raise fold down to like five or six pigs probably, somewhere around there. Depending on position, depending on stack distribution, payout structure, uh, ICM is very complex, but probably down to like five digs or something like that, I would say. All right, Joel is in there uh, and winning again, chipping up pretty much tied with Mr. Doberman as the short stack, Ilias next. In line there, we are still six-handed after losing the latest player. Everyone is guaranteed 104,000. We got a question in the chat about asking you how to chip up on day ones in a multi-day tournament. Any strategy for sort of big field size early on, like the main? No. No, I just tend to play it like a regular tournament. Like, I, I don't want to think like, oh, it's a multi-day tournament, so I, I need to like aim to have this many chips or whatever. Uh, I just play it the same as I would as a long one-day tournament. Just You have to take structure into account, but outside of that, like how many days the tournament is, isn't really... It's more about the structure, I would say. And if it's... Like if you think about like the WSOP main event, for example, which is nine-day tournament, an amazing structure, and you have a lot of room to maneuver throughout the whole tournament, basically. Um, of course, you can avoid some risk you can skip some spots that you would normally take in a smaller field um just because you have a lot of recreational players in there who might give you very profitable spots down the line so maybe you skip some marginally profitable spots now because you know you will have very profitable spots later um so some stuff like that but yeah in general i wouldn't change too much yeah Makes sense. All right, we see a Oliver Weiss take that one down. A check suited. He had the best hand to start. We saw a flop, flop, and that flush draw does get to take it down versus Geo. I'd say Oliver and Geo have sparred the most. They've, they've had a lot of confrontations, some light three bets, four bets, some interesting hands. And uh, it is it is Elias now with a 30 plus blind stack, going to open eight, nine suited. Doesn't look like we'll get much, much adversity. Ravi giving it up. Did, was it Ravi that made the online World Series final table? The name looks so familiar. I know I've seen him around a few times. Um, some some big results. I, I think he's he, you're familiar with this player, yes? Maybe I, I've seen him a lot as well. Uh, I'm trying. Was he on it? Because I final table at WSP main last year. I think mm. he maybe was on that one, but I, I can't yeah. really remember. Uh, I've played with him quite a bit, at least. I've seen him in a lot of high stakes stuff. Yeah, it sounds right. That does that does sound that does sound right. Definitely. Uh, definitely why did definitely. Pocket Force fold there in the chat? I I didn't see that. Did you see that? No, nah, it was last hand. I just I was just you no know, looking on the side. I didn't see. Um, maybe it was a. I didn't see if it was yeah, I missed know, it. open fold. Which player? If you we're watching, uh, Kevin. Good to see you, man. And we got Ace Ten off and Ace Nine suited. Ace of clubs for Geo in the big line. Definitely sort of high up in the the range. El Elias can check back Ace Nine suited, oh. and he is behind still. He's gonna have to check back so much here. It's such a better board for Geo than for him. Um, that he's just gonna have to play check back with. Yeah, he's not even opening 7-8 suited here, right? So he doesn't pop any two pairs. Uh, he doesn't open trees, so he doesn't flop bottom set. So Geo has like way more two pairs, way more 7x, way more 8x. Um, yeah, and he's covering. So you have to be super passive here as Ellis, I would say. And now they're just going to check it down. 
Yeah, Ace Nine suited does check down. Gonna see he is pipped. Ace Ten off says bring it. Come on, three point four million in the middle for this man Geo, who was the chip leader, still sitting sitting pretty well, although he is in third place currently. It's always nice though. Still six left and. Healthy stack. We see Ace Nine off, King Jack, two modest hands. Oliver's been fairly aggressive, I'd say. He's definitely opened a lot and plays solid, yep. though. Plays solid. Definitely I like this fold. Not afraid. Gives it up. It's close with Ace Nine off there, but I think you just have to. Button versus Cat off, I would three bet. But Cat off versus High Jack, a bit too loose. I would go Ace Ten off there, I think. You guys, here look into Espen's mind, talking sort of how close the nuances are and situations, hands, stack sizes. Sevens for Ravid. No customer until Elias in the big line. Elias has a nice jack 10 suited, pretty fair fight. And likely, yeah, we'll see a flop here. I'm from Norway. That's doesn't question in the chat where I'm from, from Norway. But I live in UK. Jack 10 suits, got backdoor clubs, gut shot over sevens. Not, not, not like a fist pump, fist pump flop by any yeah. means. I like this check back. Like you don't have a club, you don't have a heart. You have like, yeah, I, I'm, yeah. Seems like one of the, one of the best hands to check back here. I would say. Yeah, 366 in the middle. Ravid has the best hand and is in the best position. Goes for a little protection on the turn. It's probably fine. I don't know. Seems kind of whatever between check back and yeah. bring this. Let's see if it gets punished. The greedy protection bets. Uh, Jason in the chat asking how long I've been playing for. I've been playing since 2004, but only full time for the last five years this time around. I played like semi pro back in the days and then went off to school, uh, went to school for six years and then worked for one year and then got back into poker full time like five years ago or something. 2017, 16, 17. Yeah. Dinosaur. Yeah. Dinosaur, just like you, Jeff. You've also been in the mix since forever, right? Uh, for a long time, yeah. 2002, <laughs> three, something like that. Been, been in the mix for a while. What's up, Kevin Vasquez? Good to see you. Yeah, we are, we're having a good time here. We're seeing some high-level stuff, and we are seeing aces get passed out to Joyo, who honestly has had quite a ride today. He's disconnected. He was short a stack. He's in there, six left with a chance, right? With the healthy, he's peaking-ish towards his stacks. He hit a nine versus aces to be all in and out and now he has got a wow very very interesting flop king 10 suited loves the board but aces does block right the the, the ace not so available he is going to come out he did this last time with this lead out and then got mm. flatted and folded obviously Ilias going nowhere has a very key card and also has the backdoor space but joel has a wow this is a lot going on on this board all of a sudden i mean there's flushes possible straights if your aces got to be pretty concerned has to go check check now right yeah close decision for oliver weiss pre there he had queen nine off uh which seems like a very close spot considering he's covering both players by quite a bit if he were like equally stacked with them i think it's like pretty easy fold but when he has this many chips i think maybe he gets to defend it actually um, but discipline fold from him, which was very good. Come when you see what's gonna happen here now. Um, some guy in the chat just asked me if I played against Adamo and what that was like and how to play against him. I played against him in a couple of Triton tournaments. Uh, I played with him online a few times as well. Wow, he gets it. That, that is a crazy hand. <laughs> that is a crazy hand right there. Wow. Wow, that's twice he's let out 
<laughs> precarious positions and then when any resistance was shown folded when he's pretty high up in the range although um yeah i mean man small was small bet too right on the turn honestly i like the aces fold i think i i don't like alice's bet there i think i think the bet is out of line and i think the aces fold is good but given how out of line alice was with this bet i guess it just needs to continue there but i think like if you're the interesting part is he saw it probably that he's watching the replay you'd imagine right it was almost a deja vu spot where he bet ace jack on the king jack got flatted and then folded yeah. on the turn when he was bluffing so this time he was actually semi bluffing i mean well yeah it was he had well he was betting with the worst hand we'll say that and that was a interesting spot joyo still though he's got 1.1 million he's six left and he is still there mr doberman pretty close with him and you know, again, big jumps here from six to fifth, it's about almost thirty thousand. Fourth, you can see one seventy all the way up to three fifty three. Here we see King eight gonna go ahead and bet, and Geo with a nine mm -hmm. and a key heart in his hand, and King eight off doesn't get a improvement on the turn. It is gonna be basically he's either shutting down, and, and the heart comes out now in the river, and he's got the key heart. So the board pairs. Very interesting. I was thinking it was a pretty good hand to blast off, actually, with King 8 off here. Like, you have the 8, which is kind of relevant on a bunch of straighty rivers, like 10, 7, 5. And then you have the King, which is super relevant on heart runouts. You can just blast off whenever heart drops off. I, I, I was thinking King 8 would be, like, very high-frequency barrel here when you cover. Uh, but it does cover the check back. And now it's going to be interesting, because now it's probably going to go check. And big bet, I guess. And then we'll see if he heroes it off. I mean, there's no way you can block here. You have to check right. Yeah. Yeah, he's, his timing his timing is... He, he try to freeze him a little. Oliver, though, yeah, it's interesting. It's super interesting. 747 in the middle. Let's see what he does. King 8 got called on the flop. It's, it's mm, very, very size-wise here. He decides to just throw in the towel with the king high. Fair enough. Might have got called. I, I would probably bluff that hand, but I, yeah. I don't know. I, I would just barrel turn there and go kind of mental with this one, particularly. You can't only do the equity driven bluffs there. You can't only do the hearts and the seven, eight suited. You need some stuff like this as well. So when a river is like the 10 of hearts, you have like the perfect bluff to follow through with. Uh, if not, you're going to run out of bluffs, right? If you only do the equity driven bluffs and you don't have one of these like one heart combos in your turn bluffing range, then you're basically running out of bluffs on a lot of rivers, right? Where, you know. Anyways, um, I'm not saying it's 100% frequency, maybe randomized. What do I know? But it seems like a really good candidate to just blast off there to me. Yeah, I think so too. That's interesting hand. I'm kind of making a note on that. I'm curious. And a couple of queen tens handed out. Robbie could be in a nice big old pair there. Kings. They're big, they're red, and they match. And Elias with a pretty clean closing the big line action. Queen ten suit. It doesn't get much on the flop. Probably a range C bet for one big blind or something. Yeah, nice. Goes for the goes for the bet. Queen ten suited. It's got two overs in the back door. Flush draw. Not a great board though. See what he comes with. Does he ever check raise? Possibly, but seven three three. Just call. Makes sense. Just calls. Five hundred six in the middle. No diamond. No queen. No ten. And this should be the end of the story. Should be the end of the story for this hand. We do see a check check and the river jack of hearts. No improvement to Ilias. Queen high is no good. Is there ever a bluff to try to get ace high to fold? I think you have to bluff at this point for sure. Here's about sizing. Probably would we'll just go some blocky, blocky sizing where you can have 7x in your value betting range, something like one third or B25. That's for half pot. Yeah, yeah, and this should get snap called. Yeah, I'm not sure what you're trying to represent with this sizing. I'm trying to say that you have a jack, maybe, but you don't have that much jack X, right? You have like ace jack, king jack with back doors, queen with back doors. A 
Let's see, Ravi thinking about raising or calling. He does raise. Nice. I like it. Because I don't think 3x will go for this sizing. I think 3x will either go huge or go into the block sizing, uh, the block and then 3 bet over raise. So I think it's nice to find that race with Pug Kings there. Good job, him. Some guy was asking me to finish the Adamo thought. I mean, I played with Adamo only two or three times live at Triton, and none of those times he really had infinite chips. So he wasn't in the in the 5x pot jamming mode. He was had to be quite in line. I, I only played like one one spot. I only think I played like one pot, big pot with him where he three bet me and I four bet jam days five suited. He folded. That was the most interesting pot I played with him, I think. Uh, I think we're like four of the money or something, and he was trying to boss people around a little bit. But I think I, I played with Limitless, and Limitless was way more interesting to play with <laughs> at Triton, at least, because Limitless had a lot of chips in the tournaments that I was playing with him. He played like he played some 5x pot shoves and some crazy, crazy hands. Looked like he was playing. Yeah, he he was in the mix for sure. Very entertaining guy to play with, and yeah, you know, very impressive stuff. Yeah, he's final table, but I feel like the most times here on the show, like almost without fail, every week he's at the final table. Of course, sometimes he's got more. Wow, look at this! It goes, goes for the shot, gets snapped. Ace Queen can't really get away here. Has him no. crushed with. A river only, you know what, if he can find it. It is not paint. It is a double for Mr. Doberman, who's really played a very snug, solid, well-executed game here, and he's going to find himself healthy with 2.8. Oliver White still 2.6, and everything kind of leveling out, right? This is uh, stacks getting consolidated, no one really running away, other than Ravid now with the 5.2 million, who has a nice playable hand on the button. But, yeah, Geo sort of calmed down a little bit. He was very aggressive as a chip leader. He's sort of hunkered in a bed and mr doberman is off and he is going on a mission trying to separate himself lines up 40k 80k thanks again for being here we are we're seeing some fun inspired poker today we've seen some big bluffs we've seen some big calls some big moments some coolers we've, we've had it all uh this is this is some very interesting hands that's for sure Some big folds, mainly. Yeah, big folds for sure. We've seen we've seen a bunch here. Both players of the four see a blind on blind suited, ten and jack high diamonds and spades. Better flop for Doberman. He's got the lead. He's got the the backdoor draw, and he is going to snap call and prove to two pair check quickly. Speed of play. No tanking here. The question is, how much does this compare to live in-person play? Maybe Espen, I'll let answer the online versus, you know, so you've been playing more live and, and probably online too lately with 10Ks and such. How would you compare a 10K Super Millions versus like a 10K similar size field at, at uh, one of the stops live? Um, I would say live is usually softer than online. I would say, um, yeah. Usually the 10K Super Millions final table is going to be a lot tougher than a live 10K final table, I would say. Um, yeah, I think the main difference is that usually, like, of course, you have a lot of online players that will play the live stops as well. But the thing is, when you play online, your learning curve is so much steeper than when you play live, right? Uh, so if you never play online, you're just like not gonna see enough hands, basically. Big all in here. Um, Joyo looking for the double with Ace Queen. And it is gonna need uh, to hit the river. Joyo, who's had quite a joyous ride, is looking for one more moment today. It's not a not card it. that will improve. It is not quite there. We see five eight would have made. The straight jacks ravid is going to get richer and this is all of a sudden a little separation and you look at gg poker winnings versus super million so a a player that's in the mix nice score there six figure score and hope he gets some internet sorted out wherever he's at for future that's 
who knows what would have happened. It may not have worked out bad from this instance, but generally having a good internet is a uh, prerequisite to playing the highest stakes <laughs> tournaments online. So we'll say GG's out there. And now you guys have two players remaining for the hundred dollar bonus. So again, welcome you to hit the thumbs up. A lot of people hitting the thumbs up today, 188 of you. We've got a action pack, 2,100 people watching today, man. Appreciate that. We see the GG poker action going here. We've got a five-handed match for some big money and always Tuesdays, 245 Eastern. You know to come here and check it out. Here we go. Robbie going to throw a little bet out there. Both players with nothing going and aggression rewarded position important in poker. And we are five-handed. Who's going to win it? Who do you got? Robbie, is it too much to overcome? Do you think six million competent player with the chips or do you, do you like a dark horse here? I mean, he is in a very good position, of course. He has more than twice... Oh, actually, that's not true. He has almost twice as many chips as Geo at this point. So, of course, he is a favorite to win. But um, anyone's game. No one is, like, super short. Uh, even Ellis, who's the short stack, has more than 20 bigs. So it is just anyone's game, I would say. It's going to be interesting to watch. Um, but, yeah, to finish the tangent I was on, like, if, if you play online, you, you just get so many hands, you know? If you play live, you get, like, 20 hands an hour or whatever. If you play online, you can get more than a thousand hands per hour. And you can imagine like your uh, pattern recognition and how many spots you're going to see and think about and whatever, like your progression curve is just going to be so much steeper when you play online than we, when you play live. So, uh, yeah. So in general, I think online players tend to be a bit more sharp, a bit more tough to play against than the live guys. Um, but of course, you do have a lot of the online players in a mix in the live tournaments as well, the bigger ones at least. So, yeah. yeah do you agree? Is, how, how, yeah, do you, how do you rate? I, you know, I think I, I think my experience in general is live is definitely softer. I'd say, you know, I personally, because of the jurisdiction I'm in and you know, being with another poker site in the past, I haven't really played a lot on GG and I haven't played the Super Millions, obviously doing a lot of the final table commentary now um seeing a lot of the quality of play and you know 10k online i would agree it's generally a lot tougher right like when i if you play a 10k live you know, i don't know how you would calibrate the two but you know 10k online versus a like even you know a 1k live i would say like a 1k online is almost like a 5k or something live or 10k you know it's like it's it's just a lot tougher yeah. i'd say yeah. something like that so yeah that's that's how i feel yeah, maybe 10x in stake is a fair comparison. Like maybe 510 live is comparable to NL100 online. And maybe like playing a 1K live is comparable to playing a $100 tournament online. Maybe yeah. something like this. 1K to 10K. Seems reasonable. 10x. 10x difficulty difference. Maybe. Yeah, that's about right. Maybe seven, seven and a half, eight, eighty, you know, something in there. Oh, look at this man. My man's my man's spicy. This guy, this guy's fun to watch. I like I this one. It. I like this one. It's a bit. Eh, I like it. <laughs> yeah, you have some very sexy barreling potential. Wow, it does go over the float, and now he's gonna barrel for sure. <laughs> This is one of the cards that is mandatory barrel at this point. Curious what sizing he goes. Um, hmm. Half pot? 500k? Yeah, 1.2 in there. Both players healthy stacks. I mean, really kind of tight ICM wise. Ravid's yeah. got the Ravid's got the the uh, the advantage on everyone, but it's sort of you know. There's, there's basically three stacks around the same. Yep. Reasonable float from Oliver as well, I think, given how active Geo has been with the King of Diamonds there and some backdoor straight stuff. I don't mind it. Uh, what do you do here? Hmm. Three bet fold, maybe? I don't know how much flatting you want to do in general here. It might be one of those spots where you will see the solver and never flat call. Oh, wow. Hmm. I think this is a bit too much, but I could be wrong. It is cut off hijack. Maybe it's okay. I think I would true bet fold.
Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I think uh, we're going to get to see things moving here, guys. 6.3 million for Ravid. He is playing a chip lead situation. Flats, ace, 10 off. And look at this. King six suited the six, six, seven board. The life of Geo. He's running, running well overall today. Yeah. Wouldn't mind seeing a check back in his spot here. He's supposed to check back this board a lot versus the chip leader. Um, you need to have some strong hands in the check back range as well. Yeah, 10, ace 10 does pick up some equity and nine we see would give a win. He thinks he could just have the best hand in Geo with second place stack. 277,000 for second, 353 for first. And if you go out in fifth place, you get 133. So, you know. Decent chunk of money. Yeah. For all of these guys. 10K buy-in. Yeah. How many runners did it get? Do you have that uh, stat somewhere? I, I, I don't have it up, but I, I think it's around 150, roughly. Does that yeah. make sense? Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, I can't, I don't have the lobby up here, so I'm not sure. Mm. Curious how this is going to go now with the king, queen, and the ace, queen. Geo should just fold. Uh, okay, it does open. Rabbit is going to three a bit, I guess. And then Oliver is in a really gross spot. Let's see if he'll find the four bet shove. It's a good spot to do it, to be fair. Like, it is like two very active guys, like Geo opening to light and Rabbit having the chip lead. So he's going to three bet quite light. Uh, it is a decent spot to find a four bet shove here, I think, with Ace Queen off, but yeah. Let's see. Because yeah. I mean it's a big, pretty big pickup, right? If you just take it out and pre here, you win a wow. million now without uh without contest if you find a shove here and take it down. Yeah, he goes for a really big sizing, but yeah, he picks up exactly 970 if he were to find it and that is yep. that would put him in a very healthy third place and he nice. does find that well done oliver and king queen ravid is not expecting that right that is that is almost surely a wake up hand but unfortunate good timing it would have worked versus ace two's off so that's also one of the variances in tournament poker like the the wake up behind you know you make a three bet that's the good spot you're supposed to just kind of run up and ravid stack all of a sudden that was a you know it's 10 percent of the stack that goes away there. Yep. And we are seeing some some decent hands here. Ravid with fours. We got ace 10 suited, Mr. Doman. So flat. We're gonna see likely a three-way pot here. Ace 10 suited does call fast and middle set seven ten deuce rainbow board. What a dreamy flop for Elias. Does go ahead and snap over a check. It's curious, Doberman just snap calls pre there. Doesn't even like consider like maybe a trivet bluff, maybe I can shove. Like bit, yeah. Interesting. The the worst hand by far, the one we want to put in money so far. Oh wow. Uh, <laughs> Ellis in a dream, dream, dream spot here now. The thing is, like, what is he cold calling here ever? You don't cold call anything. I right. think yeah, I think you just click it, click it or jam. So I would just click it with this on, just make it right. Yeah, million. so like there's there's literally like I can't think of a hand that you'd want to call. Yeah, no, you, you just click it to like 950k or whatever the minimum race is here. I think that's the only plan. Because that way, you know, you can do that with pocket aces as well. Um, and then you can fold if you do that with aces, and then it goes like jam jam behind you, for example, right? You can just fold aces. Obviously, with this hand, it doesn't matter. You're always getting it in, but and now Ace Ten is like, yeah, folding. I think you're calling one point one to win three point one, and like you're always just drawing to five outs. I think, or you could be drawing dead like you are here, but it's like pretty much the only hand you're drawing dead against, though. Like Alice is not opening deuces. Pocket tens is just one combo. 
kind of curious that he jams here though. He has to fold. I'm yeah, pretty it looks sure. Like, it looks like Jack's plus, right? I mean, at least. Like... No, it has to be like, there's no draws. Yeah. Like he's not doing this with 9 8 suited. 9 8 of hearts would be the only main one, maybe, but I don't think so. I think he just folds it, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, nice pickup. Ilias, man, he's had a nice final table. He's pretty steady, pretty sturdy. He's back yep. to 3 million. It's really tight right now, though. I mean, all the stacks are plenty of chips. 40k big blind. Or, I'm sorry, 80k big blind. Mr. Doman a little shorter than these guys. I mean, Very sad get. spot incoming for Oliver here. Yeah. Potentially. I mean, it's not like he's going to go broke or anything, but he's going to have to take a flop, I guess. It is going to be a tree bet to like... Oh, wow. That's a very small tree bet. Very small. Now it's easy to call, of course, when you get this good of a price. But... He's actually second shortest now, Oliver, all of a sudden. Like Doberman on the guy shorter. I guess uh, he has the same stack as Alice, I guess. Bit more. Uh, what would you do with King 10 or Queen 10 as Alice? Uh, I would fold. Fold for sure. Yeah. Yeah, it's... Uh... Goes for a range, see bet, I would imagine, since he's betting this hand. This is one of the few, one of the hands that has the least incentive to bet this flop and he still bets it. So I guess he's just decided that his range is strong enough. He's just going to range bet small, which, yeah, probably good. Yeah, Oliver Weiss here with threes after a little bit of a hit. And yeah, Mr. Would Doberman, fold. Good fold. Mr. Mr. Doberman gets to open here. He's been tight. He's got the puck, and he's got no one with anything to contest with. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, Mr. Doberman. He's he's put together. You know, it's a uh, he is the shortest stack five left. He's been quiet, but he's also in the game, and he's still got you know nice what twenty. Four bigs, something like that. Twenty-three, five, five bigs, almost. Uh, he's he's got plenty of chips and pretty pretty well executed game plan. Some of your some of the sizing you were saying was a little big. It seemed in spots, but he was balanced, right, with his aces and with some other hands. So um, I'd yep. say he's he's executed a nice nice final table so far. And we are down yep. to dead middle. Start with nine five left. Lot to play for. Over two hundred twenty six thumbs up. You guys are rock stars. We don't even have to bait you in with the. As we, we like to do the giveaways, we we will it will come down to who hit the thumbs up and a keyword. But you guys are already over ten percent of you here have done that. Twenty four hundred watching, we do appreciate it. Thank you for being here with myself, Jeff Gross, the host weekly, and Espen Yorstad, the current reigning WSOP main event champion. It's got a it's got a nice ring to it. Something that won't get old. And there's only so many shots to to win that tournament. You've done it. Checked it across off your book. We have seen some repeat final tableists like. What do you think is your over under for main event final or position finish in your career? You're young, you know, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of main events left. What would you be happy with when it's all said and done? You know, you're, you're 97 years old. You're, you're in bed. You're looking at it. You're like, I've played a lot of main events. You know, I won once and I had one other final table, one other third, another win. What, what's your, what's a realistic line for you? I don't know what's realistic. Like, uh, I'm obviously going to be, uh, I'm outperforming anyways. Like, if I go on to never cash it again, I'm outperforming, right? So it's hard to ask for much more than winning this tournament. It's, um, yeah, I just have to realize how blessed you are to win such a tournament. And then, yeah, that's it. As long as you're like, as long as you're realistic, and humble enough to not think that you're hot shit because you won this one tournament and realize that just the amount of variance that's involved for winning a almost 9k field tournament is just, yeah. And I've been in a game for a long time, so I know how it works. I know that like 
anyone can win one tournament and I don't really put too much um too much into winning one tournament like the people that I respect in poker are the guys that are in the mix consistently battling in high stakes and proving themselves playing really well those are the guys that I have a lot of respect for um and to be to be honest like the if you look back at the main events in previous year like before this year's main event uh, if you asked me in january this year uh, who won the wsp main event for the last 10 years i could probably name two guys maybe three or something you know it's not like <laughs> yeah i don't know for me that's not where it's at that's not the yeah what i put a lot of stock into I respect the people that are in the mix consistently at the highest, highest levels. Yeah. Makes, yeah, makes perfect sense. It's also nice. It's a nice one to get. That's for sure. It's a nice, nice trinket to have. It's, it's a nice one to say you won. It's, it's, it's definitely cool, but it's for sure. It's uh, it is funny how it works. I look at like investments too. You know, it's like, it might be the 10 K main event. It might be a tag team one K or a three twenty five online. You never know which tournament you're going to win. You got to play your best, put yourself in good spots and, Winning bracelets is definitely cool. And Ravid going for a light three bet is cool. He's kind of had a rocky start to his chip lead five-handed. He's going to step right on Elias here with the A7 off. And, you know, feels like it's going to work, but Elias also a capable player that can feel feel yeah. things, momentum, and could take a gander here. Although I think, I mean, feels like this it's going to work. work. It feels this like has it to work. work. It would be so out of line to four bet the C comes. <laughs> Jesus, what a savage Ellis is. This is so out of line. It, it is, but you know, the great ones do it. The great ones pull the trigger and he does How that, does he do it? Man. I don't get Ellis. Wow. I don't get it. He just wins. He just crushes. I don't know what is it with this guy. He just fucking knows. Sick. Six swing. Four what is million. It? it is tight at the top and he is on a mission five-handed and Gio, who likes to see hands play boards, does flat the ace eight three suited. This will be a small bet takedown, and we are this. This is this is the Ilya show. We're just a part of it. We're hosting it. This is a absolutely beast mode. He has got a three way tie at the top, and look at these hands, Oliver, who's been asked to be patient. He's had to make some big disciplined plays. I don't know, Mr. Doberman, who has got just rips it, and wow. I mean, ICM wise, still tens like. Man, I, normally you would think this would be a really quick call. It still can't, just can't get away. It's too big a hand. Mr. Doberman no. finds his man with a four to one dog queen on the flop. No. It's sweaty though. There is, oh wow. man, not where super sweat flip flops position. Can the board pair? Will it? Will it not? It is another club, and that means it is not a board pair. G that means it G is GG Oliver Weiss who. Got it in behind. Can't blame him for doing so. And look at this. It is a four-way tie, essentially, for first. Four point wow. four, four point four. I've never seen this before. Two. History on the Super Millions has been done. And GG Poker winnings over a million now for Mr. Doberman. 562,000, number 90 in the Super Millions ranking. Pecking order. Well done, Mr. Doberman. Nice score. And just couldn't quite get it going, but he actually did get it in good for a big pot with a four to one favorite. So we've seen two four to one get theirs today in big spots, nines to aces and tens to queens, both hand nope. from behind shows you as a poker player, as a tournament player, it's not about those hands, the coolers, the ace king, the queens, the ace king, the ace queen suited, you know, for 10, 15 blinds. It's about the, the small pots winning uncontested pots, getting the light three bet in making the, the, the right four bet those type of those hands. You can't, can't think about those cooler hand situations and, we have seen a very strong brand of poker today. And this is, this is take a, take a picture at home. I mean, this is wild. They are literally four way tied. I mean, it's like the exact same stack. I've never seen that. We've got about yeah, in the it's middle. Crazy. We've got two of the, the four guys are for the bonus hundred dollar GG poker ticket <laughs> giveaway. If you guys are digging the four way tie, hit the thumbs up. I'm here. <laughs> Espen's here. We're playing to a winner. And who do you got? Who do I have? What do I have? You have, I have the chip leader, Geo and Elias, correct? And you have David and you have Oliver. Is that right? Are we literally, are we flipping for the dinner? Is that correct? Is it, is it dead on? I have Oliver, at least. I think I'm not sure about Ravid Garby, if I have him or if, I think I have Ravid and Oliver. I think it's, yeah, I think I have those two and you have the two others, Elias and Geo, right? That is what I believe either way. Um, okay. 
Fuck, I don't want to be rooting against my boy Ellis, though. Um, if he wins, I'm ha happily buying you that dinner. <laughs> the only two guys I know from this uh, far left is Ellis and Oliver. Um, the two others, I don't really know. I'm going to try to not be too biased in my commentary. Yeah, yeah it's funny. Yeah. Like I, I saw there was like some, some Spanish or something Instagram page that tagged me in an Instagram story a couple of days ago, uh, and it said something in Spanish, and I had to like go into translate to figure out what it said, um, and it said something like "world champion turned vlogger" or something like that. <laughs> it was like linked to my YouTube channel or whatever. <laughs> it's pretty funny. It's, um... That that was my that's my goal in life to go from world champion to vlogger. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, hey, listen, I, I said this to you before. It's tricky to go from you know you don't see a lot of world class players that do a lot of content. You don't see a lot of content guys that are world class players. So if you do both or you're a hybrid of some sort, right? It's it's a dangerous combination. So I, I you know I, I I know you know what goes into it. I know you have a team behind you, and I know you're you're young, hungry, committed, and motivated. So, you know, I wish you kind of the, yeah, I wish you the best on the, 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 the journey of doing it. Cause you are doing it. So it's exciting. Thank you. It's good to see you. Great you, ambassador. You've been doing game. it though. You've been doing it. Do you have any advice for an up and coming noob with only 4k subs? Um, any advice? Yeah. I mean, it's just, if you want it, you know, di consistency, dig in, even if it's short, try to get in streams, try to get in stuff daily, give people stuff that they want. You know, I almost feel at times personally, you know, it's something where doing it for doing Twitch for years and not being able to do it from the U S most of the times traveling out of a suitcase and, and, and being all over the place, it's difficult, but, um, you know, I, I love yeah. it. And I think that again, it's just part of the journey. You have to just like, if you do it because you love it and, and it's great, like it doesn't really matter, right. What the, what the result is. And, and for you, fortunately, financially, you know, you hit the 10 K to $10 million score. You're not like pressed. You're not starting from nothing. You don't have a, any bankroll. You spending a little money on equipment or an editor or having some doing to have the bells and whistles. It, it's a lot of, you know, I would say go for it. That was actually the one thing I would say, all right, we see 3.3 million in the middle here real quick before go to that next thought. I mean, this is going to shift that four way tie. Oliver has a queen and the flush draw and he slips it over got to be a little uncertainty but also a bit of um you know he's kind of he's blocking the flush draw he doesn't have a jack 10 or ace but i mean this is uh geo we know he has a propensity to fire not one to give up and ace 10 high does it have enough showdown value or is he going to feel compelled to bet he doesn't bet probably a good decision i don't know as played if oliver would have gone away it depends on the size and we won't know but we do know there's a new chip leader in town oliver weiss that austrian flag 5.8 million looking good gotta gotta feel the the, the power is shifted you i kind of lost my train of thought something along the lines of oh yeah so like i'll say this i've done stream boat right with bill perkins jamie staples kevin martin we did stream house in montreal same with like kevin martin matt staples that was kind of like some of the more fun you know going for it sort of content things my only advice would be anytime you're not sure and if it's like should i spend a little more on the play should i get a little better equipment should i get the assistant should I go more if you have the resources to do it always do it because like looking back when I hired you know uh, shout out to Vadran the man the myth the legend he's did like 200 twitch streams he came on board with me full time to work with just me and Bill Perkins back in like 2016 right basically said look Vadran make your life easier make mine easier pay a monthly thing at the time I was like how can I pay this money when like I'm not even sponsored right or like I'm not, but invest in yourself, bet on yourself. That would be my thing. Because like, when you look back yep. on it, like I I paid this amount of money. It's like your output and your, what you're doing. It doesn't matter. Like it will work out most likely. And worst case, you might break even or even lose a little, but your stuff's going to be a lot better and your life's going to be more free. So that's kind of a rant, but that would be um, someone specifically to you. It's obviously different. Someone at home, if you're watching, I would still say even get a loan, have a friend, buy a piece of your thing and like shoot a little bit um you know go just just go for it don't don't cut corners yeah. try to save a few bucks because ultimately um you know you want to you want to you're going to save yourself a lot of time and expedite stuff if you are able to push it to the next level it'll 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 be a lot better and faster i think if you do 
you know, splurge a little on, on, I'm not saying go crazy buy the top computer, top equipment, top everything, but you know, hire some help, get some mods, yeah. get, get a support system and put yourself in a winning position. Thank you. I think that's good advice. That's essentially what I'm doing now. I've hired a videographer and an editor and trying to make like high quality content, even though it costs quite a bit more than if I would just do it in a cheaper way. Uh, so I'm spending quite a bit of money now and it feels like, yeah, I'm spending all this money, but if it leads to getting a sponsorship one day or something like that, you know, then it's probably worth it. Um, so I don't really see it as spending money in that sense. It's probably an investment in that sense. And yeah. if it ends up leading to nothing and I don't get a sponsorship and I spent all this money for nothing, it's still not for nothing, I would say, because if I'm happy with all the content that we're producing, which currently I am, I think the content we're creating now, the YouTube vlogs especially are quite high quality and I'm really happy about it. So even if like, I'll still be happy. Like it's not, um, as you said, uh, after this summer, I, I'm not really that money driven in that sense. Anyways, yeah. if I end up losing, uh, a hundred K or 200 K or whatever, trying to create something cool. And I create something cool without getting any ROI on it in that sense. That's still, yeah, it's fine. For sure. For sure. I got a lot of, a lot of fire in the chat today. A lot of, a lot of excitement. See a lot of cool, fun, consistent people, some new faces as well. We're seeing some high, high, high intense spots here. And look at Elias going for it with the ace, ace six, the six of hearts and the ace blocking ace jack. King Jack sticks in and look at that. He is going to improve and check it over. And does Elias go for it here? The nine comes home. Very interesting, very interesting spot. Matt, Matty Ice, Matt Staples, his ears were burning. He heard stream house stream, stream something. And Matt just came in, one of the, the most prolific Twitch streamers, content creators in the game. Jamie Staples, Matt Staples, Matty Ice in the building. Good to see you, man. Hope you're enjoying. Maybe Matt's lurking here every week and just hasn't said hi. Cause like if I mention <laughs> his name, he just pops in, but I love it. I love that. And good to hear, man. Good to see you. We got to catch up in a while. Uh, this is, uh, does he go for it here, Espen? Seems like you kind of have to, and he's not one to shy away from pulling the trigger. So I would imagine it does. Not going to work out though, as we can see. I think I like this actually. I think I like this sizing. It's enough to fold out two pairs, uh, but a jack is probably going to call you anyways. So I think this is like really good, really smart sizing from Edis. Um, Some people in the chat asked for a link to my YouTube. You can probably just search YouTube for Espen Ulan or Espen Yorstad or Espen Poker or anything. And you will find it. Um, the channel is just called Espanol and Yorstad. Just my name. And he says tilt. Is that a tilt and a call probably? <laughs> yeah, he has the call. Right? Yeah, this is uh, tilt is going to turn into. Like he's chopping with value, right? Yeah. And really is. So I like you. As you said, you know, very interesting sizings and good, good rationale. I just don't know if you do get the jack to fold there. So kind of accomplishes the same thing you will get some yep. pair of folds other other some other folds as well so um yeah yeah matt, matt matt matt's probably thinking too it's, it's that time we did that in montreal where we got like a house for four of us i was actually engaged at the time and my wife came for part of the time but we were in this like house it was like an old house in montreal you know that we all chopped up i wasn't in charge of the arrangements but you know i'm not gonna say i was upset but like the point is right if we'd all spent like an extra five hundred dollars, or thousand, or two thousand dollars for like three weeks or a month to get like a sick place versus like an okay place. Like it's a much different experience, you know. Like on top of each other, it just you want to have, you know. Anyway, that's that's the kind of stuff. And then like actually, the crazy story is we had stream boat. We did. We rented a place. I don't know if you remember this crazy hurricane. I mean, there's been a lot of hurricanes, but this was like twenty man, nineteen, eighteen. I'm not sure now. Maybe it was even twenty seventeen. But we rented a house like three days into the one month rental, where we like split it up in the Virgin Islands. It was like the dope house. Everything was crazy. The hurricane came and we never got back. Like the house, like roof got blown uh, off. There's a prison break. We actually have like a credit, Matt. If you're if you're listening, still make a note. We should follow up. I think we spent like six or seven thousand each, and we just never used it. We like left after two days, and that was it. So uh, uh, yeah, we where was this house? Is that Virgin Islands? the British Virgin Islands. Yeah. Bill Perkins, uh, like near where he lived. And he was, you know, we were doing this thing and literally 
it was crazy and and it was like they the, the locals were like oh it's not a big deal like you know this is like uh will be no i remember going to the airport like out of there like yeah this will blow right over and it was like wiped out the entire place like bill's kids used to go to school there they had to like move back to houston um, there was like whole country got like this you know just absolutely obliterated like that's like, very sad power goes super sad um and and scary i mean hurricanes are getting yeah yeah, yeah. starts a lot no of, joke a lot more serious and, and frequent for sure down in miami as well right i remember like a few years ago i was actually going to miami for the first time i had booked a hotel i had booked a flight i had booked everything i was going to miami and then like last like the day before or two days before or whatever there's a hurricane warning and i had to cancel my flight and i went to i ended up going to seattle instead but yeah i remember that hurricane was like pretty serious there was like millions evacuating from uh, miami for that one i don't remember what year this was i think it was probably like four years ago four or five years ago, I would say. Yeah, it sounds right. And it's always like, you know, you see it kind of coming. It's the same sort of trajectory pass often and you're always sweating because like, yeah, you know, it's coming and is it going to hit sort of near you, on you, towards you? Do you evacuate? Do you not? You know, yeah. it's tricky, but it definitely is usually like a once a year on average sort of. Scare. Okay. Or, yeah. And probably usually not that big. I would imagine if it's like once a year thing, they're usually not super destructive or what would you say um yeah uh i'd say it's you know it just it's just depend i'd say like they're in in general they're getting more more powerful more destructive and there is unfortunately certain spots there nice hand from from our friend geo who has been active and impressive today uh taking yep. it down there 4.8 million but um yeah i mean there, there there's been some 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 it was your question about the strength or how you said how much how have they gotten more powerful or is that what you're saying mm. i didn't hear is that what you were, were you asking if it's gotten more powerful the hurricanes or yeah sorry i got lost in this spot i was thinking do you three about here or what do you do <laughs> but uh yeah no i was asking yeah if, if if it's like one once in a year occurrence uh i was asking like it's probably not like super destructive then in like the sheer force of the hurricanes or would you say they're like, it's like a dangerous one every year? Yeah, I'd say about once a year, there's like a, a real scare. Did did I just miss, what it was his, what was Oliver's hand right there? Last hand, did I just miss? He just had uh, some random hand now. Oh, I thought he had- Gio thought opened he had... cut off with 10-7 suited, Ellis three bet button with ace queen off, and Oliver had some jack nine off or whatever, I think, I don't remember. Um, yeah. Okay. I thought he had, I thought he had, uh, um, what is it called? I thought he had jacks, but obviously did not. I just was blocked where my screen was slightly. Uh, okay. So, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Not jacks. Um, interesting. All right. Well, we are going to see again, we see some, some pretty deep stacked everyone here with healthy stacks and we are coming into, you know, this is, uh, this is an interesting shakeout. This is a unique shakeout where we see four stacks with the same, roughly the same stack start four-handed play. So this is, be curious how this takes tempo-wise and where it's at, although the blinds do keep going up. All players here are pretty experienced too. Pretty pretty dangerous experience. Um, yeah. I will, I, I got to say it's close to call. I mean, Oliver, Oliver does have the chip lead and this is uh, interesting here as well. We got the worst hand betting and Ravid with the ace jack though, eight nine nine three doesn't have a spade. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa! Unlucky river. Yeah, I, I, I was I, I like the bet from Ellis on the turn. Um, it puts hands like ace jack in a really tough spot. I think. Um, good job, Ravid, for finding the call there. I think it's really really close with ace jack. Hmm. I was going to say, you would probably rather have like ace five suited than ace jack, right? The jack is blocking a lot of the bluffs that Ellis is going to have here, right? Like jack 10, queen jack, um, king jack, maybe even. Goes for the block. Again, kind of tricky spot. Not in terms of calling, I think, but I think you could bluff raise this one sometimes. 
Nice hand, Ellis. Yeah, very nice, very nice. Four million. Oliver Weiss got the fours on the button, and somehow something. Oh, the overlay message popped up. I can't see his guy. Okay, Ace Jack and fours. <laughs> Ace Eight. Sam, what's his hand? We got a flat. We got a post flop situation. And once we get to three handed, I will do the keyword. If you do hit the thumbs up and you enter in the keyword, um, um, they are going to be eligible for a fifty or hundred dollars. Pretty good shot for a hundred today. A lot, of, a lot of love today already, man. 300 thumbs up. They must, you know, people respect the world champ. Espen comes in here, he demands he demands and gets respect. And that is what, that is what happens. So he is off and to a good start here for our thumbs up viewership. A lot of, a lot of familiar faces, but we got to invite Espen more often onto the show. I know he's a busy man, but again, if he's going to study anyway, if you're going to watch the show and you're available ever, I'd love to have you on as a repeat guest in the future. So we are, we are very, very happy to have you here. And I know that you again you do battle with a lot of these guys so anything any any uh don't want to give away too many secrets but if you if you notice anything of course we're always open for deep dive strategy and we are all ears here people are thirsty for information and oliver weiss is on the turn with pretty bad board for his hand does he ever want to get going here? wow wow that is something something special I was going to say he's probably going to barrel off here. I would imagine pocket fours barrels off really often on this board. Um, but it didn't. And now he is probably going to have to go for a small value bet on a river. He's probably going to go check 350k or something. Decide, I guess. What do you think? Yeah. What are you doing Oliver's shoes here? You kind of have to yeah. value better when it goes check turn, check, check, turn, check river, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's I guess it yeah, it's thin, but it's um I guess you're right. And depending on what Robbie may does he ever block himself or goes Wow, he bluffs it. Hmm. <laughs> it might actually work, but interesting. And people because what is he bluffing here? He has the buffs. Wow. Nice. I was thinking Ace Jack is gonna be too strong to bluff here. He did not agree. Mm. Interesting. Does it make a note when when that's ringing? Have you heard my? Does that make a loud noise? Did you hear that or no? When someone just called. No. Hey, where's that home last? No, you didn't hear that. Okay, it's like a super loud noise. Sorry. If it did i i got uh people calling in they gotta know this is this is this is uh you know it's a serious business here 245 eastern on till a finish we got queens on the button for geo takes it down and ace jack ace deuce oliver i mean man this is honestly the shake out of this is could be a bit right the blinds are up to 50 100 but no one's really making huge mistakes geo's definitely on the more active side but everyone else plays pretty well i mean not not saying joe doesn't play well he's definitely you know no I don't see a lot of players like four betting five, six off, but I, I think uh, obviously some hands play themselves and no one wants to be the one to go out for 170, 353 at stake. But we are, you know, coolers are always possible. And definitely these guys are also some of the best in the game. They're not afraid to go for it. I feel like we've seen this a lot today. People turning hands into bluffs and bluffing with really high showdown value stuff. And the best hand folding a lot. We've seen that a crazy amount of times tonight in those similar spots. You know, like aces folding on king jack, king queen jack, whatever. Ace jack folding on king jack, whatever. Now you had pocket fours folding on this board, which is reasonable. But yeah, we've seen it a lot. People turning quite strong showdown value into bluffs. I think even Ellis wasn't even bluffing with the king 10 suited on king queen jack five or whatever it was with three clubs, right? He wasn't even bluffing, but he still managed to fold out better. So no. yeah, some interesting stuff for, going on. For sure. For sure. Interesting stuff. Um, yeah, this is, this is, this is going to take, take a couple special hands to get going here. Uh, yeah, this could it, last for a little, for quite some could, time. I think it could, I mean, we're, we're definitely the record. I mean, yeah, I don't want to say. I mean, I've done 23. The most I've seen is 
like two hours 45 we're at we're at we're actually we're getting we're getting up there two hours and what started 245 so two hours 20 minutes i mean there's definitely a chance although oh, yeah. the blind still for sure we're saying a new record now for sure you feel you feel a record day yeah 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 all right well hopefully it ends in a I, at that point i feel bad i hope you win the dinner because this is a this is, this is a you know this, <laughs> no, i'm having fun i'm enjoying this yeah, don't worry is, about me it is uh it is uh, it is a fun it is a fun tournament to watch and especially when there's guys who you know or guys that play we know that play for sure well sometimes you see something like i don't know if i would do it generally it just goes to their the tie that you know maybe it's worth looking at why they're doing it and they got their reasons so it's it is fun to watch hope you guys see the payouts at the lower right as it is juicy it is about double between fourth and first so a lot to play for right now there's a lot 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 to t- play for i I got to say, I'm impressed. I've been impressed. I, I think it's a little too close to call. I think all, anyone could win, obviously. But I think, you know, Gio's sort of the wild card. Just know less about him. He also just seems more willing to go for it. Um, but, you know, it's also, he was chip leader with nine left. Now he's sort of, you know, it's uh, it's tight, forehanded, and the pay jumps are really big. So see what he what he comes up with. Who, yep, who's yep. your pick right now? Forget, forget how we did, you know, that you have your picks. Who do you think actually wins if you just game flow – What's happening? Seat, seats, the chips. Who's your actual pick? Forget about our bet. Okay, so I'm not going to go with the chip leader this time. It would be natural to say Oliver, but I'm going to go with Ellis just because Ellis is just unbelievable. He just knows, man. I, I don't know what's going on with him. He just knows. So I'm going to go with him. Good. I like that. I love to win the dinner as well as well at this point it's uh i i have so many dinners out man i'm gonna get i, I need to get on the peloton I, I got 23 dinner bets that that are that are pending and you know i've probably won like i think i've won a little over half <laughs> nice but it's close it's close i, I have a little advantage too right because i recognize the guys i kind of know how it goes like there's also some mistakes people mess up on there's been some wild picks. Like there's been some picks where people have really like Malika was on last week or Zavi. She did this. She just kind of like completely like she's a big Victor limitless fan. He was like in six. She picked him first. Like there's been some punts in there too. So um, <laughs> definitely I've got a little, a little advantage. Um, <laughs> yeah. 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 All right. Jack nine suited ace three. Both players have something. What up, Magic Matt? We got a legend in the chat, my main man right there. He is in the building. We've got, we've got a. I, I was, I was gonna ask. So I was gonna, I didn't know. I have to ask GG. Obviously, having the main event champion doesn't need clearance for a guest invite. But if you were to, let me ask you, honest, don't be funny here, Aspen. If I was to tell you, I have like one of my very, very, very close friends, right, who plays poker. He's a definite recreational, okay. But like, he's funny. He's fun. Like, do you think it would be insulting? to like the the stream integrity and the quality if like I had a guest on for commentary that was like completely color and just would be saying kind of like random like he would there be really not a lot of analysis or he might randomly throw in some blocker talk that makes no sense like is that like would that be fun as a mix or would that be like would that and would that take down the integrity of the the show and is it would that not be a good idea off the top of your head I think it would be good but I'm I, I'm not sure like yeah no I think people would enjoy that. Have an episode that is a bit less about strategy and whatever, and a bit like more banter. If he's like a funny guy, like I'm sure people enjoy it anyways, right? Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I, I think, it, I, well, it, it depends on the person, right? Because everyone's humor is different. Like if I could literally tell you, I guarantee you, you would be laughing out loud, like hard throughout. And like you wouldn't, it would be like, you would be at certain times, you wouldn't know. If he like you would be like if you just tuned in and you didn't know if he was like serious or not you'd be convinced just by the certainty of what he's saying but like it, yeah. I think I think it can't go too wrong I just don't know like he's it, the name's not going to bring power it's not the main event champ he doesn't have seven bracelets he's not jungle man he's not Elky he's just you know he's just a legend yeah. in his in his own world and in, <laughs> in, in, in mine but wow. um anyway all right. Good idea. Invite your friend. If the chat approves, like I think we could get it cleared by GG. They're very open to creativity and and trying stuff. Interesting pot here. Like I, I think Geo could have tribut. I think Ellis could have tribut. Um, and both of those scenarios would have been very nice for Oliver. None of them ended up happening. So unlucky variants for Oliver here that he didn't get tribut this hand. I think that's gonna happen quite often. 
And now, <laughs> what do you do as Elise here? You just fold, I guess. Ah. Yeah. Yeah, it does fold. Seems it is. Yeah. It is tricky as a commentator with the cards up. I gotta say, I I, I try to stay as unbiased, you know, without see, knowing like what's there, and what I do and stuff. But it, it's you just there's no way to yeah. to not have a little bias. For sure. For sure. Jason asking about my favorite hand. Uh, it, I, I used like I, I guess it still is. I can't really change my favorite hand because back in the days, Queen Eight of Clubs used to be my favorite hand. I guess I can't like change it now. That's kind of like changing the football team you're rooting for, right? You can't really kind of have to just stick it out. So I guess Queen Eight of Clubs, yeah. What about you, Jeff? Any favorite hand? I like Jack Nine suited. I, I've always loved that. I've always loved that hand. I want to love fours because, like, you know, four for four, hugging, power, energy. But like, I've lost some of the biggest pots of my life in critical times and tournaments <laughs> with fours. And I, I, so, yeah, I'd say Jack Nine suited um, is a, is a good one. Okay. So, Any suit? Any um, suit is good. I guess diamonds. I'd say diamonds would be the one. But mm -hmm. I just I love that hand. I don't know why. I just I just I do like that here. Um, but you said Queen Eight suited. Queen eight of clubs specifically. I think I just, I think like early in my career, I won like a few sick pots with queen eight of clubs. And I was like, okay, this is for sure my hand now. Like I just got too lucky with that hand and kind of just became a thing. Yeah. So my friend is now in the chat. Uh, he was, I had the wrong name. It wasn't that it wasn't, uh, it's his name's green eyed Asian in the chat. And he's, uh, we're, we're just, I, I'm re-talking re out loud about, having him on so if this is the guy guys if you want to give him some love out here that we can get we can get him on i think i've already i actually have like a very more organized now I, I used to do like last day scrambling for guests i have like the next three weeks booked out so i'll i'll, I'll call this in to gg and see if we can put this guy in he's also gg's a korean company my friend's half korean he's, he's a he's korean jewish pretty he has green eyes he says one in 10 million asians have green eyes that's all true and he is uh, <laughs> he is literally a legend. So um, yeah, we'll uh, might have to get an appearance fee, but we'll see if we can we can bring him on. But yeah, this is uh, this is shaken out to be a, maybe a record stream today. You see what the payouts are: one seventy guaranteed. Elias with the king jack is going to mm. get a nasty river. Oliver is going to separate a little. Is over six million. And I don't know. Maybe if he can separate a little more, we get to see some some pressure. Although twenty five k, fifty k. Players still with a lot of chips. This is a, this is, it, it's so crazy, right? When you play the super millions and you're so used to how the tournament moves, the chips ebb and flow, the points, the blind structure, when stuff moves, when you see, I'm sorry, 50, 100K level right now, right? When you see something different or unique, well, we, like you said, you've never seen that either. Four way, like a four way split on tie and, and really any yeah. tournament, let alone this, it's just kind of cool to show you how all final tables are not the same. Like there's so many different variations and ways that things can go. Um, it, it is, it is fun. It is definitely... so complex tournament poker. I, I remember thinking I used to play cash games for a lot of years and heads up cash games specifically for a lot of years. And heads up cash games like can be quite theory theory oriented. And I, I remember thinking that cash game players in general were so much better and much more theory oriented than tournament players. I remember thinking like oh tournament players, you know, there's like luck boxes that like yeah, like the you know, like I remember cash game players didn't really use to respect tournament players that much back in the days. But now I've kind of come around, I've I've gone over to the other side where I respect cash game players a lot. They're like super um, accurate and they're like super dialed in, like very dialed in. But the thing about tournaments is that it's so complex and it's so many different scenarios. It's impossible to get like fully, um, like there's always new stuff. Suddenly you have a stack distribution and a payout structure you've never seen before. And it's like, you have to think a lot. You have to freestyle a lot and you have to, um basically add theories together because you have one theory that looks like this and one strategy part that looks like that and then you have to like freestyle and figure out oh so you have a little bit of that and a little bit of that that applies and then it's very complex and it's very fun i think um i think i would find myself growing a bit bored of cash games maybe yeah. where 
where if you only play, especially if you only play like six max online with the same rake structure, just like, yeah, I would imagine at some point you just, you feel like the diminishing, diminishing returns of what you're learning are so high. Like, yeah, I don't yeah, know. True. What do you think? Yeah, uh, I mean, I I would agree. I, I personally always just, I've played so much more tournaments than cash. I love PLO cash games now, but that's my favorite thing to play. Um, but uh, I agree. I just think P No Limit Holding Cash can be fun, but tournaments are just uh, the story of it all, the start, the finish, the, yeah. the different situations. It's just just a lot more. I, I got a question about what chair you're using, Espen. What what chair do you have in, in, the, in the, that you are sitting in? Um. It's a Herman Miller Embody, I think it's called. No, Embody. Nice. I had a couple of Herman Miller Irons in my life, and I think I prefer those actually. Yeah. I think those are a bit more suited for me than this Embody. But this is what I have now, and I'm not gonna bother upgrading for the time being. So yeah. I'm not it's sure. Good. I'm not sure which. I have the same one, but I don't know the name. Uh... Not sure on the exact like model, but I also Herman Miller, and that's why I use my office. Green Eyed Asian was just playing, playing a little game there. He knows about the the chair quality. You got to have good chairs, man. If you're gonna sit for long periods of time, that's another thing. You got to invest in yourself, right? You're playing online poker. It's like it's like a bed. You're, if you're spending eight, 10, 12 hours a day, you know for that's sure. probably a spot you want to look into uh, upgrading. And Oliver's upgrading the, the the level of play here. Six eight suit are gonna gonna take the foot on the gas as the chip leader he is leaning and he could misstep here though a six suited chip leader four-handed suited ace three players with us with an ace two of them have suited queen eight suited also you're just talking about queen eight of clubs queen eight of clubs or queen eight suited also you know it's a it's a reasonable hand four-handed but not when it goes raise likely flat or three bet and oliver you gotta believe pointing to a three bet in this spot but you could argue flat I think you'll see a three bet though, right? Situationally. Yeah, I, I'm indifferent here. Seems kind of whatever between three bet and call, in my opinion. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. it does flat, and it is going to be good news that he didn't three bet in the sense that he would have got blown off at the other side of it, though, is now he is behind. <laughs> he's in the pot and maybe finds a way to win it. Yeah, he has some chop outs. He has like some backdoor, backdoor yeah. stuff going on. Mm -hmm. usually it's probably going to just check down, but no, takes a kind of protection looking stab here. Yeah, I don't know. I don't mind it. Oh, wow. Huh. I was going to say he probably doesn't fold out better very often, but uh, <laughs> he did. So yeah, I was wrong. But yeah, I, I think probably the GTO play is to have like a super solid chair. And then have a standing desk. And then you're mixing like two hours of standing, two hours of sitting, two hours of standing, two hours of sitting. Something like this is probably the, if you want to super uh, optimize for health, I would imagine. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. Because no matter how good your chair is, I don't think it's good sitting 10 hours a day. I think it's pretty toxic. Yeah, true. <clears throat> Very true. Very, very true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Race and take it for Ellis. Yeah, this is uh, so, 6.7. He's chipping up here, sort of separating himself. Yeah. Close open for Ellis. He does go for it. Uh, yeah. Maybe it feels like he has a post, post flop advantage. Um, seems like a very close open to me. The King Jack off seems close as well between 3 bet and call, I guess. I would 3 bet. King Jack off, shoots it on up. He is in command of the table. We saw Ilias earlier, was it the A7 off where he took a stand? We said it was kind of, was that the one or did that? No, he folded. It was a 6-7 suited, took it down. I, I forget. 
There was one hand where he did come back over the top, and we were just like, how does he know? Was it the ace seven? Oh, yeah, he had like ace, ace seven versus uh, a button three bet. Cat off versus button. Guy had like seven six suited on button, I think. Rabbit. Yeah, how does he know? How does he know? Yeah, it's uh, interesting bad. here as well between three bet and call. I think it's a decent three bet bluff candidate. Okay, well, ace four off, gonna flat king nine now with 600 in the middle, needs runner, runner. And if you do flat the, the weak ace, right, these are one of the dream spots when your opponent has no equity and you are, in the moment though, you're worried, right? You're like, man, I got the ace, like I could buckle up here and be crushed. So like we just see the check call turn, still yeah. no equity and Oliver on the ace two six seven, Club Very similar down spot down as before when Oliver had the king eight off, right? With the king of hearts. Now he has the king nine with the king of diamonds. So he has the fake fake straight draw, fake flush draw kind of stuff going on. Could see him just blasting it off on some runouts at least. Do we block or do we check? Kind of whatever, I guess. Uh, question, who was the biggest challenge in the final table of the main event? Uh, I would say Attenborough, the guy who got second. Um, yeah, he played really tough, really sticky, tough, aggressive, solid. So I would say he was the toughest to play against. Him, Matija Dobrić, the Croatian guy, and Miki Duek, who's a PLO cash game guy, really. Wow, thanks to Hero. Uh, Miki Duek told me like this was his first pure Hold'em tournament that he played. He played like a mixed PLO Hold'em tournament before in the World Series this year, but this was like his first pure Hold'em tournament, WSP main event, and then he gets third just yeah. absurd pretty crazy, pretty crazy. Oh. well during that oh. 20 plus minute tank at the final table right he you know he calls and you win what at what point what where what were the emotions like in that were you like did you did you what was like talk to me at different stages like one to two minute two minutes in five minutes ten minutes at some point 20 minutes is so insane what was it 21 or two minute tank like at, like where were you where was your what were your thoughts I, th I think the whole hand lasted like 40 minutes or something. It was close to CBS or whatever TV network channel um, was uh, broadcasting it. It was close to them calling time on him because the stream was going to catch up essentially. Uh, so it was like 40 minute hand. I, I, I think like on the river, it tanked for 18 minutes or something after I went all in. Um, but yeah, I, I, I lost track of time. Uh, I, I just disconnected from the situation basically and went into some meditation practice and uh, yeah I just went somewhere else not to because my job at that point is finished right I've done what I need to do I played the hand I'm all in I'm finished with my decision making and at that point there is no benefit for me in being being present mentally in what's going on it's like if there's any chance that it's going to like stress me out raise my pulse, give off anything, you know, whatever it is. There, it's just like not, there's no benefit. Did, did he so try to engage point, with you? Did he try to engage with you at all or no? Yeah, he, he tried a couple of times to say some stuff, but mostly he was just like muttering and talking to himself, trying to run it over in his head. But he, he tried a couple of, he tried to talk to me a couple of times, I think, but I was just not there. I was just somewhere else. <laughs> so I got back to reality when I heard like the crowd was like uh, gasping or whatever. And I like, okay. Yeah, hand is finished, yeah. and then I saw that it was GG's. Sick, sick stuff. But yeah, in the end, in the end, you got it. That's uh, that that is that is a that was yeah, pretty crazy. That's that's got to be a record and and really nuts. And I I do see Green Eyed Asian. He's watching. Shout out to Mia in the chat if she's watching as well. And I think we are going to confirm it. I might just give the, those are one of those plays where you just make the decision. You know, look at this: King Four Ace Nine. King Four actually went for a thin value bet with Ace Nine there. Yeah, value pet himself a little bit. I yeah. think I like it though. Seems good. Four, four point three million. So, 
things still pretty tight. Six million though for Oliver. And we are, yeah, I think I just got to override and put him in. I think we got to put him in the commentary booth, go off the, go off the cusp a little bit, take a chance and, you know, it's all good. Got to take some risks. GG may not, may not love it, but I'll just give a quick, there's no prerequisite. It's just open invite guests. So I think, I think it's good, man. It's going to be different, right? Contrarian, try some different stuff. It's, it's fine. We got, we got a lot of poker pro chat warriors and pros here too, but you know, it's kind of fun to, uh, to mix it up. So yeah, I think we will have, we'll have Matt on in the future. What is uh to you when you do, if all the forms of studying poker, what's your favorite to watch um, break down hands with friends or solver type stuff? What do you feel is the most beneficial for you? I think going through sol Sims, solver Sims with friends is the most beneficial and discuss why the solver does why it does. Like first discuss what both of us would do and why, and then go into solver to see uh, who was right or if we agree then see if we were right or yeah and then discuss why we were potentially wrong but whatever i think that's like the best way to learn when you you make up your mind about like what you would do in a spot and then you check the sim and see and then try to figure out why were you wrong and then try to shift your shift your bias towards that spot or shift your yeah try to remember it for next time somehow that the solver wanted to do something else I think that's the most fun. Like I, now I'm also doing a bunch of like replay analysis, like watching all the Triton events and stuff like that, just because I will be playing a lot of high stakes tournaments going forward. And the fields of these tournaments are pretty small. So having some info on players is actually quite valuable. Um, but yeah, it's not my favorite. Uh, it's not my favorite. I think solver work of spots that I played or friends played is the most interesting for me. Um, yeah, I think that yeah it makes that makes a lot of sense. It is nice to do it with friends. It makes it more fun. Also, you, you, it's not yeah. overwhelming. And and guys that are really you know everyone's got their strengths and weaknesses. Solvers obviously become more plentiful and a little easier to use, or or people to understand. But still, it's like I think there's a big disconnect between being lazy and just like want to make sure you're working efficiently because i think a lot of poker players are happy to learn and put in time but they just you know might not be the most efficient nice uh robbie does take a shot in the turn shut down river and Elias going to take his way into second place currently with almost five million but you know it's like one of those things you're like look if i want to study four hours and you're like you know you're going to get great valuable feedback content and have a coach who knows what they're doing or knows how to break it down or quickly to use the solvers effectively versus like doing four hours of stuff where you don't really know how to plug it in yourself or you might take the whole four hours to do like six percent of what you could cover um you know it's a big yeah. difference between being lazy and being efficient or inefficient i should say so i think that's yeah. uh um but yeah so that's uh for sure. Um, all right. Well, we're still four-handed and we still see a chip lead to Oliver and we are seeing Geo with the King 10. I mentioned that hand earlier, taxi cab, going to open it up and looks like we're going to be seeing some cards here. And we are flirting with a two hour, 45 minute stream right now and still four-handed. <laughs> so uh, this is definitely going to probably take the cake uh, if, uh, almost for sure. For sure. Yeah, no, I, I think that's like one of the main benefits of living in, like when you're young and single and you're really going hard at poker, living in a grind house with other hungry, uh, dedicated players, I think is super valuable. Um, I live by myself now, but for the last few years, I've been living in grind houses all along. And I was living in a house in London for a couple of years with some other established Norwegian professionals. And it was like one of those spots where you could discuss a hand at the breakfast table or uh, whenever you know like you're surrounded by people who think poker all the time so whenever you have a spot you're thinking about or whatever we shared an office as well so we were all grinding uh, in the same room uh, it's very very nice spot to study together and to always be able to discuss hands and whatever i think it's like one of the most uh, one of the best cheat codes to really progress fast if you're young and single and have the means to do that, of course. Like, that's not the situation for everyone. Some people actually want um, want privacy, they want to live alone, or they have families and they have uh, responsibilities, you know. But, yeah, I think it's pretty pretty valuable if you're in a position to do that, to actually do that. 
Yeah, it's uh, that's that's well said. Um, the 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 study nowadays it's pretty it's pretty crazy. Like I'd say the overall level's gotten a lot better. The like the the you know if you go to a live five k or something, it's definitely improved. Yeah. But you still have a nice. The biggest key to poker is having an influx in new people playing the game. So that is um that is something that seems to be happening it's just like the basic even like starting charts and some very basic information people are starting to understand and comprehend is is making it you know yeah be, be and it's so about. easy to study now you know like you have all these like online solver tools you can use you, you have so much information out there like i know people have been saying this forever oh but there's so much information out there and yeah it's just getting easier and easier uh even quite complex stuff is kind of easy to study at this point um so yeah the competition gets tougher and tougher you just need to work hard to stay ahead of the curve essentially yeah it's uh that's for sure games games constantly changing evolving and we are we are definitely at an interesting point in poker but it definitely seems like there is no shortage of action some of the biggest tournaments Biggest guarantees, 20 million plus for the WSOP online GG event just now was was pretty exciting. I think I got like 22 million in the prize pool. The mystery bounties are, are very popular and um, yeah. yeah, very, very cool. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get the giveaway queued up here. I feel like we're going to see a knockout and a double knockout soon. Let's go ahead and, and do that. We'll make the keyword uh, GG Espen and then put your username. So GG Espen and your username is the keyword for 50 or 100 GG dollars. Oh, that's how you do it. Look at this. I, I felt, it, felt it coming. Look at this. King nine to tens. Ravid gets a, I, I, it's like, I didn't know what was happening, but we are two outs away from being three handed. And it is a, is that a ace? No. no four ball, it seems like. A four, yeah. Look, a deuce. deuce. Deuce, so Tasty. deuce, not enough. Tens to king nine suited. Pretty sick. Oliver goes for it, steps into it, gets rewarded with the aggression, and that is going to be your new overwhelming chip leader. 9.6 million. There it is. Ravi Garb, Garby, GG Poker Wings. I think he did hit a big score in like the, the WSOP one of the years. So there it is. Put your username. We'll go ahead. We're going to down a three-handed, 338 thumbs up. If you hit the thumbs up and you type in GG space Espen with your GG username, and if you don't have a GG Poker username, Use a friends, give it, give it away to someone or split it with them, or maybe you're in a jurisdiction that doesn't have it, but that is how you go ahead and get in. So hit that thumbs up, type the keyword in. We will pick a 50 or hundred dollar winner. You actually have, it's about an even fight. You got Geo and Elias for the fifth, for the hundred, but Oliver, the chip leader, you get 50 if he wins. And I have got a, this is pretty, pretty even. This is a good sweat for the dinner. Two to one chips are about equal. You got a little, <laughs> little edge and here we go. Yeah, fun lineup with the final three here. Two of uh, my friends and then Gio, who's been the wildest one on this final table, I think. Um, so I'm enjoying this show a lot. Yeah, it's it's fun and nice, nice ROI. Nice ROI return here. Yeah. Expect GL to defend this. He's been quite he's been defending quite liberally, I would say. A bit looser than what the ICM solvers would. Oh, Trivet. There we go. <laughs> Just as I was saying that he's the wildest one on the final table. He finds the Queen Six after Tribat. Yes, uh, Ellis just takes a flop, I would imagine. Can't really fold. Good jam, I guess, but doesn't really accomplish that much. I think you just have to take a flop with this one. Oh, it does jump. Just wants to realize his equity, I guess. I mean, you, you do fold out like some ace to his off ace, like a bunch of like offsuit bad ace x, I guess, which is the benefit. But I feel like by flatting there, you keep in a lot of stuff that you have dominated, a lot of like offsuit king x, a lot of offsuit queen x. Um, so I think I would prefer flatting there instead of jamming. Notes. Got Hero, a nice just highlight. Check seems good as well. How many bigs is it? It's like 17 bigs. Maybe it's a bit too much. Ace 2 is off typically. 
enjoys shoving a lot though because it has a lot of equity but it doesn't really play that well post flop uh, also unblocks a lot of limp folds so typically goes into shoving range but uh, yeah not sure yeah there's there's a big jump now of course to 60,000 between third and second 277 and of course that first pro place 353,000 looking mighty mighty tasty someone's gonna get it and we are gonna choose a winner 362 thumbs ups get that in gg espen with your username we'll call it when it gets heads up and it is gonna be 50 or 100 dollars nine seven on the river ace deuce has a winner geo not afraid to pull the trigger just generally one of the rules when you have one of the worst hands you can have to bet but here he does Wave the white flag. Quick check back. Ace high, good. Would have gotten called, I think. Very good hand to call by Alice here. Yeah. I would imagine. Raise and take it. I guess. Yeah. Ace like high. Oliver can de defend quite quite wide when he has this big of a chip lead, but I think Jack Four is a bit too. Bit too loose. Yes, it is. We are three-handed. We are playing to a winner. We are guaranteed 217 if you are one of the three in the Wii. It is a big payday. Seven deuce gets a walk. That's nice. That can that can start a little rally. You know, you know, oh man, seven deuce, frustrating. Get a walk. Next thing you know, you got five million. But Oliver putting the pressure on ace deuce opens, picks it up, hovering over the possible 10 million chip mark which is a big one to have in the gg super millions we see a lot of questions um and jack force people are asking there's some talk about it don't want to go down the rabbit hole any take on it i honestly like followed it a bit it looked ridiculous then i saw she passed this test and this and the other now there's jokes the halloween costume shot the kmart and peely pretty creative costume like <laughs> that, that was very like, good yeah i've seen a lot of good content and kind <laughs> of jokes i know she went and played do you have a take do you have a summary if someone just like uh, yes, no, maybe cheated, not clear, or you know she passed, she see. I heard she was like volunteering her phone records, all this stuff. So like she seems to be kind of putting on the table, but you know the whole hand is pretty insane. The whole thing's kind of ridiculous, and there's a lot there. Joey Ingram, Doug Polk, those guys really broke it down, went deep into the. the, the there's also some big bounties offered if there was information volunteered, right? So like, yeah, I don't know. It's a weird one. I don't know either. I haven't been following it that much anymore. I was following it quite a bit in the beginning, or a decent bit at least. Uh, I was playing some live tournament stuff when it was going on, but I was um, checking it like to like get updated every night on my phone or whatever on Twitter. And I was pretty sure it was cheat for a long time, especially when like th there was like this text that was sent to her by this guy who stole the 15k chips, like a text that really looked like was sent by her to herself or something it was like some really weird text in the mix there and i was like okay this is this is very suspicious um but but now i haven't been paying attention for quite some time i kind of i was kind of over it at some point and i was like okay i'll just i'll, I'll just let them the investigators figure this stuff out and then i'll read the tldr once it's all said and done yeah uh, i mean so I, I don't really have a opinion right now yeah, the the in, the other thing was then her and that guy Ripper, the guy they were at the yeah, it's gonna go all in and man, a six suited fun hand, but calling off here doesn't feel feel good too much. They, they were at some uh, yeah, game some together football game whatever. together, like it, it flashed on like CBS Sports <laughs> randomly. I mean, <laughs> oh, like, that is so good actually. It's, it's on a, yeah, it's crazy. It'd be like being at a yeah, it's at like a you know seventy thousand, sixty thousand stadium and randomly getting like a, a cut shot. So uh, someone tweeted that and. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's just like at some point it's just it gets it's like almost it confirms like being in the matrix kind of stuff like it's just it's too much yep. right? it's just just yep. too much uh too much wildness but um anyway we are still three-handed here and we are going to call a winner when we get heads up you guys just have to type it once you don't have to keep putting it in there but we are at 370 if we get to 500 thumbs up i'm just going to make it 100 you guys are an underdog chip ev wise to to win at this point the 50 versus 100 because it's 9 million to it's close actually what 8 million to 9 million roughly so it's up to you guys if we hit 500 thumbs up it's just an automatic 100 if we do um 
you know, otherwise gamble. Maybe one of the, maybe Elias can take it down. G, Gio's got his work cut out for him. If he gets a little momentum going, he does pair that six. He had the best hand already. Let's see what he does here. Size wise, his chess clocks are, are getting low. All the players, they've been using it. We got a minute 19. We got a minute 38. We got two hours, two minutes, 21 seconds. And we also have a potential record here as we see a almost three hours stream coming up, man. I think I might owe you a dinner anyway. Might have to just give you a free roll because this is, <laughs> this is like a, this is a record stream is, is no joke. Glad to be a part of it. Yeah. You know, if it's going to go long, it may as well go the longest um, at this point. We're... Very loose limp there with the four, three off by Alice. That, uh, yeah, I can't imagine that's a thing. Like you're limping into the chip later. You're playing with a small ante. It's like a third of a big blind ante there. You have to play quite tight in that situation, actually. 4-3 off is uh, a bit out of line. A bit out of line. Mm. Especially now, because like this geometry uh, is has 2.7 million. So he has like less than 20 bigs. And he's very out of line, playing very aggro, very loose. So if you're in Elise's shoes, you don't really want to clash too much with Oliver at this point, right? Um, when you have like twice as many chips as Geo, you kind of just want to... Yeah. He's going to go to walk here with the six. No, he's not. <laughs> Finds the limp with three six, which is very out of line as well. They haven't made a deal or anything, right? <laughs> there, there, there is no deal making here, right? No deal making, no. <laughs> no. Yeah, there's no deal making in the Super Millions, which is cool. They're actually going to be doing a live Super Millions version as well at stops where you keep track. You know, the cool thing about Super Millions is you actually see the win loss. It doesn't just like, you know, like hen and mob in areas where you're like, oh, like this much earnings, it actually will show your results. So if you play, if you got 2 million earnings, nice. but you're down, whatever, it's kind of a way to really keep score and, and do that. That's um, cool. Um, I think I'm up a little bit, but not much in Super Millions. I have one final table. Um, wait, was that Super Millions even? It was like a GG 10k at least. Yeah, it was Super Millions, I guess. I busted versus Limitless, I remember. Which, in a hand that was probably pretty bad. Like, I 3-bet squeeze shove days king off for like 26 bigs. But it was one of those spots where we ended up getting it in for a 3-way all-in versus Jackson Aces. Limitless at Aces, and he just basically had all the chips after that hand. But I remember that it was a spot where I could have, I think it was Pads who messaged me on Instagram after that hand, actually, asking uh, if I considered just tree bet, tree betting instead and then folding once it goes like jam, jam behind me because then Ace King is so screwed. Uh, and I think that would have been a better play, actually. Just tree bet for like half wow. your stack or 40% of your stack or whatever. Yeah, this is very this unlucky. Is for super, Ellis. super sick. And Geo is going to have a chance to be be heads up wow. in a 60k jump, i like this although... format a lot i like this format it's very good a lot of people would just shove kings here i think which is not good <laughs> wow. yeah. well it's going to be a two to one for a huge swing for everyone involved and we are going to yeah. be after the flop, the nine nine eight, and that Jitch. is going to be GG drawing dead instant golf claps, and the nine on the river kings full. It is fourteen million. I'm in trouble for my bet. The audience now needs ninety seven <laughs> thumbs up to make it a hundred pretty desperately, and there it is. The World Series of Poker winner, oh well over four million GG Poker earnings now, and a very impressive Super Millions ranking as well with a hundred eighth and GG and Oliver is having himself a day here. He is on his way, but not over till it's over and a big yeah. chip lead. So guys, you still have a chance to announce a winner. I will announce it very soon, but if you guys get another 95 thumbs up. It'll be $100. Otherwise, you're rooting for Geo for a comeback. It'll be 50 guaranteed. And it is it is an exciting, exciting finish we're having. On our record, we are officially coming into the three-hour mark right now on the show, Ace Jack Suited. Queen four. Geo also feels like a guy that may just put a saucy, spicy one like in early and, and go for it. Here he does flop middle pair. He takes the lead against Ace Jack suited, although the over backdoor 
flush shot and the gut shot is going to start with the bet likely going to be met with the call and we'll see a turn i guess the king pairs the board so still best hand for geo see if oliver with 900 in the middle does check back takes the free card does beat some hands loses to a queen or six king yeah i'm still thinking about the ellie's hand i think it's really close pre there with ace queen off if you tree bet and uh tree bet it or if you just flat call because it does really suck to bust there when you have twice as many chips as geo i think it's really close with ace queen off there if you should yeah. go for it or not yeah well the, the once chip leader now finds himself a distant second but the good news for geo is he is second of two, 277 lapped up. Yeah, Chip leader nine great result for him. For sure. Whatever happens, he'll be very happy, of course. He'd love to double, find himself back in it. Yeah. I think Geo Geo's playing style is really well suited for heads up because you have to be such an aggressive savage in heads up. And Geo is by default an aggressive savage from what we've seen. So I think his strategy is very well versed for very well suited for heads up. Yeah. Three six off. Gonna gonna get looked up here a lot. The ace high in the river. He's got a paired board, deuce deuce, eight, nine, queen. Although, yeah, it's a pretty big bet. So it gets called. Nice hand. Yeah. And this could be king. trouble. This I could definitely... see King Ten suited just three bet calling it off here. Yes, let me announce the winner just in case if this happens to be it. It is Luca <laughs> Mandir is the winner. King Manda is the username. Congrats to you. And we are likely gonna see it here. It is all in. Congrats. Congrats. It looks well, it's not over yet. King Ten suited. Wow. Oh, sweaty ace king. Needs a diamond, or this is going to be all she wrote, and it is a king, but not a diamond. Top two pair, GG in the chat on GG, 353 up top. What a final table, just over three hours. Don't know if it's actually a record, but it's up there, and uh, deservingly does win the dinner. And chat, you are going to get $50 to my man right there who took it down. I did put it in the chat. We say a big congrats to Luca Mondier, King Amanda, going to get a $50 GG ticket. and. Espen, you are sad. The man, the myth, the ten million dollar man from ten thousand dollar buy-ins at the World Series of Poker. Any any thoughts? Any closing words today on this three-hour yeah. final table? From one K buy-in, you mean? From one K buy-in? I satellite it in, bro. Oh shit! Sorry. Excuse satellite me. Satellite it in on GG. That's are we, okay. Worth noting. This is GG. One K to ten <laughs> mil. That is a that is a man that that has a plan, and he also won two bracelets at the World Series. So congrats to. The, the winner today and the giveaway. Congrats to our man who won the first prize, 353,000. And Esmond, thank you so much for the time. Any closing words, any closing thoughts on this final table? What, were your, what was your impressions? No, it was fun. Uh, it was a bit of a, there was a lot of wild cards on this final table, I think, um, which is fun to watch. Not just like uh, super stacked with all the regulars that you see every Sunday. It was like some uh, lesser known people. And yeah, I think Oliver played really well. So happy to see him win it. Congrats to him. Yeah, epic stuff. Thank you to everyone in the chat, guys. Appreciate you being here. Appreciate the support. We'll see you same place, same time, 245 Eastern next Tuesday. Mike Watts, Sir Watts, will be joining. Very, very prolific, high-stakes player. Great guy. And we look forward to that, as well as uh, some more giveaways, some more fun. And Espen, thanks for the time. Get some rest, man. Enjoy your time over in the UK. And cheers to you again. We'll see you soon. I'll be watching. Thank you. See you.